Hi, I'm Magic Johnson. Welcome to the Fundamentals of Basketball. <laughs> to be the best, you have to learn from the best. That's why I brought some of my friends along to help me teach this program. Starting with my former teammate, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He's only the greatest scorer of all time in NBA history. Plus, he got that patented shot, the sky hook. Then we move along to Amari Stoudemire, the big man, down low, powerful, strong. He would dunk on you and block your shot all at the same time. Then we talk about Mr. Smooth himself, Rip Hamilton. He's only the best mid-range shooter of all time. Then somebody I work with every day named Kenny Smith with that three-point jump shot. Woo, it's good, all nets. Then the coach of the year, every year, the best high school coach of all time in California State history, Coach McKnight. Oh, he's awesome. He's a teacher. He's a motivator. The fundamentals of basketball. You hear with Magic Johnson and all my friends. I call them the dream team. I'm here with one of the greatest high school coaches in all of California history, Coach McKnight. He has won five state championships, which is truly amazing. But what's really amazing, he's won 661 games and only lost 53. Then you take into account he's won 17 CIF championships. Woo! I'm, I'm just blown away. And I'm not done yet. Hold up, hold up. He's won 21 league titles. He then only lost four league games. Can you believe that? Four league games. Man, in 22 years. Wait a minute, let me say that again. Four league games in 22 years. Coach McKnight is just amazing. And then, this is what I love the most. He has put 90 players, high school players, in Division I college basketball. That means that not only are they great players, but also good students in high school. That's what this man has done. And also he has four players in the NBA. So when I talk to this great Hall of Fame high school coach, Coach McKnight, I want to thank you for coming on. But what I want to say is this. You must be a great teacher, a great motivator, and a, and a, and a high school coach who can communicate with these kids. What is the key to your success? Well, I think uh, the biggest key is to get those 90 Division I players to play together. You know, over the years, we've been very fortunate to get a lot of good players to play together, which is not an easy thing. And, you know, we try to stress to them if they share the ball, maybe get less shots, they'll score more points because they're better shots, and just to work together. And if we do that, we'll play more games. Our season will be longer. And when a lot of other teams aren't playing, we're still playing. And, you know, we've had good success at that. Uh, tell the people about probably your, your conditioning program and also probably your off-season program that you try to help the players get better over the summer. Yeah, well, our summers are, uh, are based around practicing three, four times a week. We play 30, 40 games during the summer, uh, try to mix them up where half the team's playing here, half the team's there, so all the kids are getting a lot of playing time because there's no championships one during the summer. It's just pure uh, basketball and getting better at the game. And we've been very, uh, it, things have worked out real good for us as far as the summer competition here in Southern California. There's great competition here in Southern California. Tell me, you, you must love the game and you must be passionate about it to teach young people and to be successful. I mean, in 22, year, 22 years, only losing four games. What makes your program maybe different from other coaches? Well, I, you know, again, I think we get some of the cream of the crop players, which obviously makes a lot of coaches look good. Uh, but, you know, I, I I, the kids really buy into uh, the team, you know, playing as a team, defensive as, as a team. And our team defense has been very solid over mm -hmm. the years. And let's face it, you know, you, a lot of teams score points, but you got to stop the other uh, the opponent. And we've been very successful with that over the years. Would you say that uh, the key is having, what, a good point guard or 
a, a, or a good leader or a good big man or a combination of all three? Well, as with the Lakers when you played, <laughs> a great point guard is the most important thing. Uh -huh. Not just a good one. A great point guard makes a team. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a great point guard than a great center just because a great point guard can do a lot of things for you. And I've been blessed over the years with some really great high school point guards. And that has made a huge difference because mm -hmm. um, they can get you in your offense. They can do so many things for you as a floor leader and, and get other people to play and get everybody involved, get the guy the right shot. If guys hit two shots in a row, get them there, get them the ball for a third shot. Mm -hmm. You know, have that type of, uh, type of player. But we've been blessed over the years with some big, good, big guys, mm -hmm. good wings. We've been, we've had, a, we've had all the ingredients. What would you want people to get out of the program that we're introducing here today? Uh, what would you say that's important for them to really look at and uh, study and then go out and practice? Is it the drills or what is it? Well, I think it's a combination of the drills and some of the uh, uh, sets we have offensive and defensive. I actually feel this is a tape that a, a new coach, a young coach coming up could take, uh, impress some young kids with it okay. because it could really help his knowledge of the game. And it's simplified to the point where they um, can learn it real quick and mm -hmm. something that maybe it's not too difficult to uh, uh, understand. And that's what we're trying to get across here. Yeah, I think that's really important because we have so many coaches who love coaching in little league or even um, maybe junior professional leagues who really never played. So they could really use these sets to teach their players, especially in those YMC a YMCA leagues, also junior pros and so on. Um, if you could give them a little advice, what would you tell them right now about this program? Well, you know, we all started somewhere in mm -hmm. the coaching days, and I started back when I was 15, 16, and I did not have a great knowledge of basketball and did not play a lot of basketball up to that point. And, you know, I self-learned everything. Basketball was stealing from everyone else. Mm -hmm. And this tape is a good opportunity to learn some out-of-bounds plays, learn some set offenses, learn the fundamentals of offense and defense. And yet, you know, you're taking in from a lot of different pros with your leadership on how it's done and some of their favorite moves and some of the things, you know, they, uh, they found that have been successful for them. So I think it's a great combination of uh, youth, high school, mm -hmm. all the way up to the pro level. You mean to tell me you didn't get into basketball till you were 16? Yeah. You kid me. No. Nope. You won 661 games, and you didn't get into basketball till you were 16? No. Nope. Didn't get in. <laughs> this man has won five state championships, and he didn't get into basketball till he was 16. Put 90 players in Division One basketball. Didn't get into the basketball game till he was 16. Ladies and gentlemen, that tells you something. See, you can do it. It takes hard work. It takes sacrifice. It takes commitment. It takes passion and love for the game. And I got one of the best sitting right here, standing right here, Coach McKnight. We are so happy. It's time to get started and show you some things. Let's go. Okay, our first drill we're going to start off is uh, right-handed speed dribble. And we're trying to gain as much ground as we can, pushing the ball without uh, carrying the ball over. And I'll have the boys demonstrate right here, Magic Johnson. And what Coach McKnight was talking about is you want to get that ball in front of your body so that you can burst out of there. If you're in a pack, you can get ahead of everybody and then also push the ball where you can make a decision quickly. So you want to get that ball up, get your head up, get the ball ahead of you very quickly so you can get down the court on the fast break, okay? Here we go, go. You see the ball is ahead of their body. They're looking up the court to see if a man is open. That's how you have to do it, go. Great job. All right, we're gonna go to the next drill now. That was the right hand speed dribble and it's the same thing. Now we're gonna go to the left hand speed dribble and remember, Always get it out there in front of you, but always stay low when you're coming out. Stay low, stay low. Then when you get about three dribbles, now you can come up high and start looking up the court for the open man. Stay low out the burst, first couple of dribbles, then you can raise up high, okay? Just like this. You wanna come down, stay down. Now I can come up and get to looking, okay? That's how we wanna do it. Go, stay down, now up, yep, good, go. See, that first two steps are very important. If you can get out quick, 
then you can leave two or three guys behind you. Now that fast break going to be three on one, three on two. And you know once the magic man get into a three on one, three on two, woo! <laughs> it's over. James Worthy on a slam dunk. Michael Cooper on the alley whoop. Oh, you, you better hold me back. I'm talking too much now. All right, here we go. Woo! Next two drills are a crossover and step back crossover uh, dribbling. Now again, if we do it left side, you want to do it right side also, and especially work with your weakest hand. A lot of us like to come out and only work with our strong hand. You need to work with your weak hand and improve that. And Magic's going to demonstrate with the players the uh, crossover and the step back crossover. Now the crossover Coach McKnight was talking about is you want to be down and then you want to go about a couple steps, three steps, cross. Now when you cross, you got to cross quick and fast. So if I'm crossing over, I got to cross over and now I got to have my protection hand right out in front of me in case the defense want to reach in. So I go three steps, I cross quick. Same thing. Always cross quick. Get that ball right in front of you with a burst of uh, speed and cross over very fast and then go up the court, okay? So we're gonna do a couple dribbles left, then a couple dribbles right, cross over, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Go. Quick, see how quick, you gotta stay low and don't be high. Good, go. Nice, very good, very good. Now what we're gonna do is what we call our step back crossover. It's the same thing but we're gonna step back to crossover because maybe the defender is up on me close and I need to just step back off of it. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna step back to crossover. And it's just, just taking a step backwards and then crossing over, okay? So you may be moving forward, but maybe I need to step back to cross over and then go, okay? Here we go. Ready, go. Yes. Just to get away from the defender a little bit, I may need that little step back action just to get him back off of me, and then I cross over, and then I go. Go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. It's almost like I'm hesitating and stepping backwards, see, it's almost like I'm hesitating. Oh, and then I cross over on it. And then when you cross over, you got to cross over, boom, very low to blow past them, okay? So again, this is a tricky one, so I really want you to understand this. So here I am, I'm moving forward. Now I'm stepping back, but when I step back, I'm really moving fast when I cross over to lead my defender. Okay, good. We're now going to show you the in and out dribble and the in and out crossover dribble uh, as demonstrated by Magic. Thank you, Coach McKnight. Now, this was my favorite move in the whole world. I couldn't wait to get on the fast break and set my man up for the in and out because I used to come full speed at the man and then I fake like I was going to my left, but actually I was going to go back to my right and that defender would go like this, and then I had him every time. So, but you gotta sell it. The main thing with this drill is to really sell it. So I gotta really sell like I'm going to my left, but in reality, I'm going back to my right. So that means body and ball, body and ball, and then back out to the outside, okay? We're gonna keep it in one hand, that's the right hand. So here we come, go, oh, and then back out. All right, here we go, go. Set it, good, set it, good. Next, you gotta really sell it. Oh yeah, sell it, oh yeah, good. See, you're selling that head. That head will make a defender think that you're going, sell it, and then come back out. That's a beautiful move. Everybody now in the game has got to have that in and out, like you're gonna cross over, but in reality, you're gonna keep it in one hand. Now, it's the in and out crossover. So after I set him up and I blew past them on the in and out, he thinks I'm going to in and out him again. But in reality, I'm going to cross over on him. So I'm going to come, I'm going to sell it, oh, and I cross over and go. One more time. We'll come, 
Oh, and cross and go. Okay, here we go. Go. Yes. Go. And you got to stay low on that crossover. That's the key. Go. Oh, yeah. If you don't hear them feet, see, a ball player, if you don't hear the gym squeaking, they're not doing something. If you can hear the gym and the tennis shoes squeaking, that means that the players are doing just what they need to be doing. Always remember that. I want to show you a, a drill, and I'm going to take it to the side so you can understand. Big, I want the big man right here, no ball. You're going to be defending me. We have set you up for a lot of different drills, okay? Crossover. Crossover, stutter step, and go by. Now, when you actually are here, say I got my hand, left hand, and I cross over and I want to get by the man. Now, the main thing here is I can't cross over. I set up. I can't cross over and go wide because if I go wide, the defender now will have a chance to recover. What you should do when you want to cross over is cross your leg right here, right by his leg, so that then he cannot drop step to get back and recover, and then I can go past him and by him. Okay, that's the key. These are the little tricks to the trade I'm giving you right now. So we got here, I cross over, but I put my leg right by his leg, and then I'm gone up the court, okay? If you go wide, if I set him up on the crossover and go wide, he now can recover to get back, okay? Good, thank you. The next drill is a stutter step move and also the spin move off the stutter step, which Magic Johnson made famous. Here they are. All right, what I wanna do here is this is one of my favorite moves too because you can set the man up again because what you want to do is come down fast at him, then you want to raise up the stutter step, take another dribble, and then spin. As he thinks that you're still going to go with your right hand, you want to spin, take it to your left, or if you're left, if you got it in your left, you want to spin with your left and then put it in your right. Now the key here is to sell it again. So my first thing is to sell the hesitation, then take it. Now, when I come out of my spin, I got to have my arm out. This is the arm that could protect in case one of the guys are trying to steal the basketball from you. So coming out of that spin, always remember, if I'm coming left-handed, I got to have my left hand out, ready to protect the ball. Okay? That's the key. All right. Here we go. Go. Stutter step. Good. Good. Stutter step. Good. Beautiful. Go. Good. Did you hear the sneakers? Did you hear the sneakers? If you heard the sneakers, that means that they're stuttering very well. Good job. Nice. Next drill is change of direction where we're going to go behind the back dribble, then also between the legs as Magic demonstrates. All right, now this one is just to get the defender to get up off of you and in case he's taking away your uh, power hand or your favorite hand, then you got to change quickly. And the way you can do that is to go right behind your back. So I'm going to go three dribbles behind the back, three dribbles here and behind the back, always changing direction. And the same thing is with through the legs. It's the same thing. So if, if I want to change direction through the legs, so just, I got to stay down. I got to stay down. Always staying down, though, because if you come up, that defender gonna have a good chance of stealing the ball from you. So always stay down. And you can move faster when you're staying down. All right, here we go. Go. Good. You can never break stride. You just keep going. All right, go. Good. Good. See, you never break stride. As long as you stay down, you can continue going the same speed. But if you're up, you're gonna have a difficult time of keeping your speed. That's why you wanna stay down. Okay, young man, we wanna do between the legs now. Change direction, through, through here we go. Good, good, good. Next, good, good. See, you never change your speed, you just change your 
right through the legs, change direction, and go. And keep going. Okay? I want, I want to take it one step. Little man here and you. Okay? You guys are on the baseline. Same thing. Now, watch that they never change their speed. That's the key to this drill. Never changing your speed. Okay, go. Go. See, always still going quick. That's the key. And as soon as you make that transition from left to right, I'm down and then I'm going. I hate when young people do this. Come up the court. You're just doing it just to do it. You got to, if I'm going through my legs, I'm going to go somewhere. See, I'm going somewhere. Not just to play around with the basketball. Always remember, never waste motion. See, a lot of times you're just sitting up here wasting time, wasting motion, but you're not going anywhere. See, that, you're not doing anything. But if I'm coming through my legs, oh, I'm going, then that's going to make sure that something happens and that defense got to react to me. Okay, that's the key to this drill. All right, thank you. We're now going to demonstrate the straight line behind the back dribble drill. Coach McKnight just talked about the straight line behind the back dribble. And what you want to do is we, we got you in some change direction type dribble situation and behind the back situations. But now we're just going to stay in a straight line and just look up the floor, never really breaking stride, just behind the back. Same thing, and also never de deviating to your left or your right. You're just going to stay in a straight line, walk, you're dribbling down, right behind your back, really just straight line, got your head up, and I'm looking up the floor at the same time. All right, here we go. Ready? Go. See, you're never really moving left to right. You're just standing in a straight line, and the reason we do this is because the defender may be coming up. Here we go. Go and he can just go right away. Here we go on this side. Good. Here we go. Oh, good. 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 So you can get right past the defender right away. In case he jumps on your left or your right hand, quick behind the back and continue to go. Here we go. One more time. Good. Go. Good, 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 good. Just a quick, quick mo motion, quick drill, behind the back, explode, and keep going. But we're staying low. What you can't do is stay high. Okay, here we go. Now, if you stay high, go. You do it. I'm going to be right here to steal it. But if he's low, I can't do that. See, that's why you got to stay low with your dribble, right behind your back, keep that arm out there to protect the ball, and keep going. That's how we do it. Boom, boom. Everything quick, not slow. Everything quick. Now let's see what the big man got. Here we go. Stay down. Good, good. That's all right. Come on back. Stay down. We got to stay down. Good, good. See? Always stay down with the dribble. Yeah, keep your speed going too. Same pace, same speed, and go. Good job. You know, I talked to Coach McKnight, and we both felt that this is one of the most important drills uh, for young people, especially when you talk about using the cones because this, you don't need anybody but yourself. You can set up some cones so you can go in and out as far as working on your ball handling skills. So you're gonna change hands. When, every time you get to a cone, if you're dribbling left, then you're gonna switch it to your right. But you're gonna exchange very quickly. And so let's take a look at this drill. Here we go. Quick. Oh, quick, quick, quick. Good, 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 good. And at the same time, they're keeping their head up so in case they have to make a pass or a defender is coming, then they can uh, pick the ball up. Good, 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 good. Now, 
We're going to keep it going because the same thing they can do every time you get to a cone, spin, spin. Here we go. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Good. Good. Spin. See, now you're working on your quickness again with your spin move now. Same thing. Just using the cone. In and out. In and out. Good. Footwork got to be tight now because all the cones are real tight. So you got to keep it tight. Good. 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 This is all about timing. Hand and eye coordination is wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to do something really quick because this is going to be good. I'm going to tighten it up and I want them to really come down now and they got to go through real tight. Okay, now I want in and out very quickly, change real quick. Oh, oh, Irvin. Oh, I made it. I'm a star. So we're going to weave in and out very, you, really we're not going in and out as much as we're just working on just dribbling in, out of each cone. I don't, your body can stay straight, but I just want to work on their fingertips right now. All it is is fingertips. Go. Good. Good. Look, look how quick that has to be. Look how quick that is. Oh, that's beautiful. 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 Man, that's lovely. 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 If young people would work on this, they would improve their ball handling. No question about it. Each and every day, if they work on this, they will improve their ball handling. And the reason we do that drill is because of your fingertips. You gotta switch that ball left to right so quick, being in a, a tight situation, that it makes your fingertips stronger. Beautiful. I'm gonna have to give my hand myself because they did a nice job with that. Okay, now we're gonna talk about footwork. And Rip is great at footwork, and Coach Clay, we're gonna go a couple drills. But one thing about this whole segment, we might show it once or twice, but the repetition is gonna be the most vital part. You have to do this at least 50 to 100 times a day. We're gonna show it once or twice, but you have to do it at home as a viewer. You gotta do it more than that. Well, I think, uh, Kenny, the footwork is probably the most underappreciated aspect of basketball. I think it's very important uh, to be on balance every time you catch the ball every time you're about to shoot. Um, and I know we have luckily Richard Hampton here who's one of the best at it, but it's, it's extremely important and we're gonna get right at it. First thing we wanna talk about in regards to footwork is you know, a lot of guys back home, a lot of you guys don't even pay attention to even know what your feet are doing. A lot of times, you know, guys are coming into their shot, which I personally like coming into a one-two for the shot. The next time you might, they might hop into the shot, the next time they might be off balance and fade left, fade right, fade back, fade forward. The bottom line is you want to try to do the same thing every time. So what we're going to do right now is a simple drill just to kind of work on stepping into the stepping into the pass. It's ideally we're going to be stepping into the shot, but this drill is just designed to get us stepping into the shot. So just a simple passing, like a two-man passing drill. But the biggest thing is we're going to do everything but shoot. But I want him to walk into the shot, and you're going to see me walking into the shot as well. But this is a good way to get your feet moving to where they need to go towards the bucket. Just like that. Notice our footwork. Notice our footwork during this. Everything is the same way. Maybe a good warm-up drill you can do before you start shooting. One more. Okay. Okay, the sixth segment, what we're gonna work on now is we're gonna work on our footwork outside, outside an extended area of the court. So when, when Richard's gonna be catching the ball, he's gonna have the same footwork every time. Now for all you viewers who are left-handed, it's gonna be the exact opposite, but we have a, uh, uh, Richard Hamill, obviously he's very good at this footwork, so really pay attention to his feet on this. What we're gonna do right now is Richard's gonna start on the sideline, we're gonna have Coach Smith as a passer. Okay, Richard's gonna come into the shot, wherever he decides, 17, 18, 19, 20 feet, but I really want you to pay attention to the footwork, not so much the shot, but I'm sure he's gonna knock a few down. Yes, sir. Okay, if you notice, 
the easiest part of what he's doing, because it, it went from earlier stepping in, and if you're having trouble trying to figure it out, if you think about your inside foot, the inside to the basket, inside to the passer, that's the foot that normally you would step with because that's the one closest to the ball. I'm not going to step with this one because someone could kind of come into the passing lane. So Richard is stepping with his inside foot closer to the ball, which gives him the ability to get it earlier, step into a shot. The second thing, why do I want to step in? Why would not I bunny hop and come here? Because one, when Richard comes in and he's able to step, if he changes his mind, he can still go to the basket. If he changes his mind, that's the biggest thing, he can still go to the basket. So if I step one, two as I catch, then I don't have to be stuck on shooting a jump shot. Okay, last time. So now catch it and still look like you're going to shoot it okay. and still and then drive to the basket. Right. So watch the footwork. See, and he's still able to go to the basket. And he's still able to go to the basket. And it's natural. He's in his natural motion. See, he's still able to go to the basket and lay it in. See, that's the difference between an average player and a good player and a good player and a great player. Now, again, um, that was a little bit easier because he's coming on a break and all his momentum is already coming towards the bucket. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to apply the same footwork but in more of a play-like, game-like setting. So if he were to start on this side of the court and end up on the other side of the court in kind of a windshield type, type movement, we want to see what his footwork. Let's see if he can still keep his footwork the same way. We're going to have, again, Coach Smith going to be at the top. We're going to have Richard down here on the baseline. And he's going to be going from sideline to sideline for the shot. He's going to get a shot here, shot there. We're just going to keep going back and forth. And I want you to pay attention to his footwork. Perfect. Everything, it looks the exact same. Exact same. He's stepping with his inside foot. He's coming to the ball. Going up. He could change his mind if he wanted to and go to the basket. Now if you notice what Rip was able to do, well, as he's coming out, his footwork looked exactly the same as he coming over there. But the last thing that he did, which is probably most important, everyone talks about triple threat or squaring up, but when he shoots the basketball, I see a lot of People at home probably do this. My feet are pointing towards the outside. No. Rip turns his feet and squares them toward, towards the basket. Good shooters make sure that both their feet, their shoulders are pointing towards the basket when they're shooting the basketball. I got a question for you, Kenny. Now, as a defender, and I don't mean to jump into defense right now, but as a defender, the higher up you go, can you tell when a guy's off balance and can you take advantage of it if his footwork is maybe, let's say he had the opposite footwork right now, Let's, let's actually use Richard as an example. Let's say Richard's on the perimeter right here, and he's got his right foot instead of his left foot jabbing at me. Let's say he's, let's say he's got the ball, and he's got the opposite footwork of what we've taught. Now, as a defender, can't you really take advantage and maybe crawl up into him if he's off balance? No question about it. I think the one thing that Rip uses more than, better than anyone else is the fact that he penalizes guys for playing good defense because he has great foot movement. So if I do everything correctly and you be the passer and Rip does it correct, I do it correctly and a good defender's coming, I come at him, see he's penalizing me for getting close to him and because he, he stepped with the correct foot. Where if I, he does it the other way and back, like kind of back up, right? And he backs up, you see? I'm going to come up to him and I'm going to be a great defender and you're going to call me the glove. So you would, you would say balance is huge. Balance is huge. Balance is everything. Balance is everything. Well, the three points that we really want to hit home is that everything looks the same. It doesn't matter if we're stepping into our shot, we're curling. It doesn't look different. We have the same footwork, and that's what makes us quicker, faster, and more balanced. That was the key to anything that Rip said, anything, was being on balance. Yeah, like Kenny said, you got to be balanced. You know, uh, everything squared up to the basket, you know, uh, shot preparation. I think it's more key than anything. And uh, the shot, that's 25% of the battle. You know, I tell people that all the time. If your foot squared up and, you, and your shoulders are squared up to the basket, the shot is 25% of the, uh, the battle. So do 75% of your homework. Yes, sir. Myself and Coach Clay, we're going to show you how to move without the ball. We're going to show you how to get open. 
and use screens. But we're not going to do it. We're going to use Rip Hamilton, one of the best, or not the best in the business. Yeah, no, definitely. No. Obviously, when we talk about reading screens, uh, you know, there's not too many guys in the country that can go down the court anytime, no matter how the defense is playing, and do whatever they want. A lot of what the offense does is predicated on how the defense is going to play. So what we're going to do right now is talk about reading screens, and let's get right at it. we got Taylor King and Mike Garrity going to help us out here. We're going to start off here on the right block. Now, starting off here on the right block is where more, most offenses start. So right now we're going to have Taylor setting the screen for Richard, and Mike's going to be guarding him. Okay, for this first segment, Mike's going to be overplaying him on top of the screen. So, if Taylor, you're setting a good screen. Okay, and again, I want all eyes really to be focused on Richard all the time because this is really what the drill's about, him setting his man up for his offensive play. Okay, so if Mike's playing over the top on the screen, okay, Richard has a couple options here. He can either flare or he can backdoor. Now, the first thing we're going to go over, I know Kenny, Coach Kenny's going to be passing right now, but he's going to work on a flare. So he's going to set his man up and he's going to work on a flare. So right now what we're going to have is Richard starting on the block. Coach, Coach Smith has got the ball. Mike's going to be overplaying. He's going to be going on the high side of the screen. He's going to be coming up on this side. So obviously a fade or a flare back to the corner is, is the play here for Richard. So let's go ahead and go through that one time. Just like that. Let's actually go through it one more time here. Notice how Mike is playing. And again, guys at home, this is a great drill to start off at a young age understanding this. I, didn't, I don't want to speak for Coach Smith here, but I didn't understand this until a little bit later, and I wish I would have known this at a younger age. See, Let's I knew go. this in the first grade. I, I did know this in the first grade. <laughs> but I'm going to say, too, because I know at modern day, y'all not going to let him play defense like that. So the first thing, he has to get a little closer to Rick because as a point guard and everybody at home, if a guy's playing you like this, the first thing, Rick, he don't want a jump shot. He wants a layup. So I'm going to just throw him the layup. So first thing he has to do is get closer. But he's still going to go over the top once he sees the screen. Once you get to the screen, go over the top. That's when Rich rips, flares to the side, and he has a wide open jump shot. And he's the best in the business at understanding where it goes. Now, what do you look for, Rip, when he, you come off this screen or you see the screen coming? The one thing I do is, you know, it depends how he guards me. If he's, if he's up close on me right here, I know that I'm trying to come off this as tight as possible. If I know, I try to read him. So by the time I get here, I pretty much know if he's on up on me close, I'm a curl. If I know he gives me a little bit of space like that, I always take one step, push the screen there, or wide open jump shot right here. All right, because the last thing too, because you show us, because there is a method to that step. So you say you're coming close. Could you show us actually the push, the yep. the push off step, yep. and show everybody at, on the at, on the program? Because this is the most important thing your footwork to get the shot, the fundamentals to get the shot. A lot of guys can get shot, but don't have the fundamentals and their feet are turn in different directions. And if you watch how his footwork is, you'll see how he gets open as well. Like I said, it's all shot preparation. I, I tell myself all, that, all the time. I said, the shot is nothing but 25% of the battle. It's all about getting your feet set, getting, your, getting squared up to the basket. And if I know that he's, he's chasing me, but I know he's gonna flare off top, I come up, I push off my left, by the time I got the ball, I'm already squared up for, for the shot. Okay, so now let's do something else. Okay. And one thing, guys, I want to mention real quick. I know all of you, when you watch highlights, you watch a lot of the slam dunks and the three-point shots. But I want you to watch his breakaway speed. Right when he kind of, what Richard does really well and what not a lot of guys do, is once he gets to the screen, from there to where he gets the shot, it's a sprint. And on this, it's more of a back pedal, but most of the time, it's a dead sprint. And I want you to pay attention to that back home as well. Okay, let's do like three at over. Okay, 25% of the battle. Same thing, I come up, left. Take a shot now. Okay, that's why we got edited. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, that's perfect, that's good. Okay, one more, last one, last one. Notice he's waiting to the last second, he gets off, he puts it off, I'm gonna give him the ball where he can do something with it, oh. and, he sh and he shoots it up. So that's what the important thing is, to push off. The push off is most important. Yep. Okay, and another thing, just straight out of that, that movement. Now, again, he has the flare option, but also there's a backdoor option. Now, in this thing, Mike Garrity is going to really over-exaggerate coming over the top of the screen. He's probably looking for a steal and going down the, lay going down the other way for a layup. But obviously, he's not going to get it. We're going to work on the backdoor cut now. Why don't we get right into that? Same thing. I know he's coming up. Layup. Same one more time. Yeah. Let's do that one more time. So, it's up. 
Point guard has the ball over his head. Boom. Back door. Boom. Now, the, the other thing, it looks, everything looks the exact same coming up before as it did when you fled. Yeah. Because you can't, if you come up, might guard him again. If you guard him again, he comes up. It looks the exact same. All of a sudden, it's not the flare, and he cut back door. So everything looks exactly the same, no matter what you do. And that's the deception that he has. So, so far we've got the flare, we've got the back door cut. The one we're gonna work on now, and I don't mean to speak for Richard, but it's probably one of your favorites, we're gonna work on the curl cut. So we're gonna have the screen right now up high. Taylor's gonna be the screener. He's gonna be up here, setting the screen. Mike, right now, what he's gonna do, and a lot of, a lot of coaches will say, well, let's just trail him. Let's trail the score. You know, coaches are real frustrated when shooters start making shots, so they're going to try to mix up things. So this time he's going to trail, and what Richard's going to do is he's going to, he's going to come off hard off the screen. He's going to catch it right here for about a foul line curl shot. So we're going to work on curling right now. A lot of, a lot of, thing, a lot of times with the curl is, you know, the guy's really pressing up on you. So, you know, the one thing I try to do is feeling. You know, know where he's at at all times, and I, I know where my screen is. And I tell my screener sometimes just to keep my guy off balance. You know that I'm gonna come off that screen, you know. So I come, think to the left, think that I think I'm going left with Kenny. Then I actually take off right here, and while I'm taking off, I'm still looking behind me, knowing where he was at. And as soon as I get it right here, I'm going my shot. One of the big things, if you if we we do a couple of them, yep. and then we'll talk about it again. Okay. All right. Bring him over. Oh, he shot him again, got him again, we got him again. Yes, sir. He thought that was my throw, I should have threw it. We got him, we got him in here, I'm gonna be assist leader. Got him again, shot. Now if you notice, one of the things that the defender did, and Rip did, he penalized the guy for playing good defense. Because what happens, I'm gonna take your place for a second. And when he comes down, he's setting the screen. Most good defenders say, I'm gonna get on the outside shoulder. See, now he's created the space and he got through and got the shot. Because what he's going to do is say, okay, you're going to chase me around? I'm going to penalize you for chasing me around. And you're going to be very sorry you did that. Instead of before, a bad defense, he penalized me where he went and he fled. So either way, you're penalizing guys if you're a good offensive player. Okay, another thing real quick. I want to ask Rich, uh, the, 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 you know, when you're in the game, and I know it's easier to do here because we got, you know, obviously a couple high schools, very good high schools, but in the game it's a different situation. How much contact, how much body contact can you get away with? I don't think it's just in the professional level, but in college and high school, how much can you really get away with? And is there a fine line between, you know, what you can't do? Uh, you can get away with you know, a lot. Well, you know, if, I, if I'm on you close, yeah. like this, I mean, is there, can you get away with a little nudge here and there? You gotta, that be, I, you gotta be very sneaky about it. Very sneaky about you it. You know, the one thing about me is, People look at me and they say, okay, I got to body him up as best as possible. And I love that. I use that to my advantage. Because a lot of times when people guard me and they put, and they're using a form, I use that against them. I might go this way and just take this, this little nudge like that just to get you off balance. And I use my speed to come off the screen and curl real tight to get my shot off. Okay. So I think when you, when you move without the ball and definitely come off the screens, you use what, uh, like I say, little sneaky tricks. You know, I, 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 I mimic Reggie a lot off of that. You know, he used to get me with it all the time. But it's all about using your full speed, you know, knowing where the screen's coming at all times and changing directions. Well, one, more, one more area I want to cover right now is, again, we've talked about this side of the court quite a bit. Now, as a defender, when you start getting pretty, when you watch tape and film and you start watching Richard, like, how am I going to guard him? Well, I might just decide to come out here and wait for him. Well, you got to be able to use the other side of the court as well. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to have we're going to give Richard the option of setting his man up on this side of the court. And he's going to go ahead and get a 16-foot jumper right there on the baseline. Now, on this one, you can really see his breakaway speed. After he gets rid of his defender for that split second, he really hustles down to the other side of the court. So we're going to do a couple of those right now. Let me get out of the way here. Mike, why don't you, Mike, why don't you play him actually however you wish, and maybe overplay him a little bit to this side to give the viewers a chance to see him having the option of going the other side of the court. Actually, Taylor, why don't you go over here? Taylor's going to be setting the screen on this side. There's going to be already a screen on this side. Why don't you set it, Coach? Okay, I'll side. set this screen a bit as if he was coming this way. Taylor, you go that way. This is coming that way. Let 
Let's do a couple more of those. subtle thing that Rip does every single time, every single time. When he comes off the screen, everyone's talking about coming tight. Sometimes even, you always want to kind of touch shoulder to shoulder. Sometimes I even see Rip grab his own man. So this is how he knows he's coming tight. He's grabbing him, coming off, and he'll know he'll be able to come tighter to the screen. And then no one gets between the defender cannot get between his face if you're touching your own man. There's no way you can get through that. Yeah, like Kenny said, this is, this is, I always say, this is my security blanket right here. And as long as he's staying still, I'm going to come as tight as possible. Even if I got to grab it to get right there, because when I come off that screen, there's no way possible somebody's going to get between me and my, my screen. No way. Okay, now the last thing I want to finish up with. Now, ideally, we all want to get a shot every time down the court. But there's some times where the best thing to do is just to get into offense. So the last thing we're going to do right now is Richard's whole concentration right now is just getting the ball. So we're just going to have him popping out to the wing. I'm going to move this ball rack a little bit. We're just going to have him popping out to the wing and receiving the ball just to get into an offense. This probably is one of the most important things out of everything we've talked about. This is probably what we're going to get most off. So right now, we're just going to get back to our normal screener and our defender, and Mike's going to probably, he's going to be playing him honest. He's going to be playing him probably the last place where Richard wants him to play is just honest, forcing him to one side of the court. So Mike, you're going to be right here, forcing him to one side of the court, and the biggest thing is just getting open a few times. For your viewers back home, you know, it's very important to get into offense as well. So what we're going to do is do that a couple times right now. Come up and set the screen a little lower. Exactly. A couple more times. Again, using his hands quite a bit to try and get him off him. That's it. That's reading the screens. Hope you guys back home understood a little bit about reading screens today. Yeah, it's just, the biggest thing is we got to go over the points. Reading the screen, knowing where your defender is. That's what reading the screen is. Second, where your offensive player is setting the screen. And shoulder to shoulder, as tight as possible. Those are the three points that Rip brought out today. Okay, next we're gonna talk the pick and roll with the all-time greatest player, one of the all-time greatest players ever to lace up with Kareem. And now, one of the up and coming, Rip, you get to play pick and roll with Kareem. Well, you two guys be the offensive players, Coach Jason and I be the defense, and you kind of walk us through what's a good pick and roll and what we need to do as a guard and from a, uh, from a big man standpoint as well. Uh, the first thing I want to start out with, you know, when I know I got a great player like Kareem, you know, a guy that can shoot the little 10-footer, you know, I want to come down and I want to wait for him. I want to set him up. You know, the one thing I don't want to do is get too close to the sideline because if I get too close to the sideline, then it's easier for Kenny to guard me. You know, it's easier for me to, him to guard me going this way and they can easily help out. So the one thing I want to do is when I come down, I'm reading him the whole time. I know my, I know Kareem is about to come. But when I'm coming down, I got to make him respect that I'm going to go baseline. Because if I make him respect that I'm going to go baseline, I got him off balance. So now when the screen do come and Kareem do come over, I got him backing off a little bit. Now I'm coming off trying to get to a spot. Now if he just helps a little bit, I know that I got a 7-footer and a 6-3 guy. And I'm just going to lob it up and let him go. Okay. Now Kareem on the other end, as a great screener and a great roller, what are you looking for? Well, to, at, at this position, I want to make it easy for Rick to set you up. So I want to give him the best possible angle, the widest possible amount of space so that he can take me, uh, rather he can take you into, into my pick and create a gap that has to be filled that, that creates pressure on the defense. Okay, so let's get to that point. So you come down, come down. we're here. All right, off I'm off balance. Now He's the pick. Right here. Now, what's your position in cream? Now, where do, which way do you turn and how do you roll? Now, once I get uh, some contact with you and I can 
make you uh, stop your motion. I want to turn and keep an eye on the ball. I always turn to the ball and wait and see what the defense does. And he gives you it, and we got a layup. Two points. Okay, now let's say he comes in, and I say, I see him. Mm -hmm. I see the pick coming. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go under the screen. Yeah. I'm going to try to go under it. Now, what would I do as an offensive player with the ball? Okay, as I come down, and I know that you're going to come underneath, I just read your eyes. So I'm going to keep bringing you down, keep bringing you down. As soon as the queen gets right there, I'm going to take one step back, and I got a wide open jump shot. So you already have in your mind, if I'm going under, yeah. I have a wide open shot. I got a wide open jump shot right behind you. And Kareem, on the same thing, as, a, as you know that I'm trying to go under, what are you trying to do uh, oh, offensively? If, if I can see that you're hedging to, to go back under, I want to turn with you. Yes. As you go yes, to turn you. under, I'm going to turn this way. And I'm just going to just brush you enough. It's going to slow you up just another half a, half a step. And that gives a great shooter all the time he needs to get a good shot. OK, now let's say, because I'm a thinking man's defender over here. <laughs> me, and, me and Jay, we're going to think this game out, Coach Jay. So now, let's say I come through and I said, I'm going to make him go to the basket. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go around the screen. Mm -hmm. Now, how would I, now what, what are you thinking? Same thing. I'm going to wait for him. As soon as you come, I'm going to come off him as tight as possible. And then the same thing. Just lob it up. Got me a nice little two points. Easy basket on the little fella. Okay, and the last thing. Because Rip has been killing us. Now we double team. So Kareem, if we're going to double the, as he comes off the screen, what are you going to be looking for? All right. Now, in the event of uh, the, the uh, jump for the double, I have to read the, the defense. So when I see this man cheating, I'm going to break early. Go right in and get a layup. So break it early if he cheats over. Now let's say if he stays late and he comes over. Stay late. Stay late with him. Now come off. Now we double. Same thing. Slide to the basket. No wonder y'all score so many points in this game. <laughs> That's the way you run the pick and roll. It's an understanding of reading the defense as well as understanding the offense. Yep. Okay, now we're going to talk about post moves. And obviously Kareem has been one of the best that ever do it in terms of in the post. And Coach McKnight is going to help us out. And we got Alex kind of defending sometime and actually demonstrating the show post moves. Well, I think we should start off with the hook shot, obviously. Kareem has made it famous. He's the best there ever was at the hook shot. And uh, Kareem's going to show Alex some of the finer points of shooting the uh, hook shot. Well, um, when you shoot a hook shot, basically what you're trying to do is uh, use uh, the element of speed and quickness with somebody your own size, or even somebody that's a little bit taller than you, you can still get the hook shot over them because they don't know when you're going to shoot it. And so if you can get them involved in defending it, going from side to side, you can always get them with the element of surprise and get it off before they can react. And, and uh, block the shot. So for anybody, you know, with, especially with height like Alex, who's going to be playing in the pivot, this is a great shot to know. Uh, and any like big guard or or forward that is going to get an opportunity to get the ball on the post, this is a great shot to know. The the best way to practice this shot is to work on the footwork. And the footwork means how you set the how you set the shot up using your feet. Now, for the, the footwork, I always use uh, the drill that George Mikan made famous, called the Mikan drill, it, which you use one ball, and it's just repetitive, uh, shooting the ball off of the glass right in front of the basket. It's just like this. Now, this, bill, this uh, drill develops ambidexterity, timing, and footwork. It's all incorporated into one drill. I would do this drill every time I warmed up to, to play basketball. Now, as you go further on, you'll, you'll take this uh, a little bit further out so that you're a little bit further away from the basket and you work on using the backboard to your effect. Perfect. 
Okay, Alex, you try it. Start and close. Right and close. That's perfect. Keep doing, try and make five with each hand. Okay, good. Kareem, now, could I ask a question? Sure. When did you start working on the hook shot? I started campaign? working on this particular shot when I was in the fifth grade. They showed, the, the kids at my school showed me how to do this drill, and it's been part of my basketball fundamentals ever since then. I always do this. It keeps your timing perfect, it keeps your footwork perfect, and it works on your touch. Now, there are ways that you can enhance this drill. I need another ball. Can I get another ball? And that's, I use two balls. So on the offhand, you have to keep this ball above your shoulder. And again, this makes you do just a little bit more in terms of your grip and your shooting touch. Very good. That's perfect. And last but not least, you can get a, a medicine ball and use that for the off ball. And that'll work on the strength in your, in your off hand and the touch in your shooting hand. Now, one of the things now is, let's say if I have a defender on me. Okay. Because let's talk about the positioning to get your hook shot off. Okay. For someone uh, to be playing in the post. Once somebody gets the ball in this position, they're really a threat because right from here, I'm only 10 feet from the basket. So let's talk about even getting to that position. And I'd love to be magic for a day okay. and be able to pass it in to you, Coach McKnight. You could be, you could be Pat Riley. You got it. <laughs> and we go down and, and we talk about just getting the position and then I know as a point guard where you want it. Okay, in order to, to get good position here, I, I need to get the defense to commit to try to take something away. So if Alex is going to guard me, he's not going to want me to just walk into the lane here and, and, and get post up position. So he's going to body me and try to keep me out of the paint. Okay, so that'll let me get the ball right here. At this point, I have to make the defense react. If he's going to try and take this shot away here, I'll make him to commit there, close the door with, with my back leg, and then I'm in for an easy shot for a layup. So, Alex is guarding me. I make him commit to there. I close the door here and try and make that shot. But the key is all based off of your first move. Which off of is the first, which is the threat that Alex does not want me to go here and shoot that shot. So the threat of going to the middle sets up everything else. Sets up everything else. And you have to have a credible threat going to the middle. Okay? If, if, I, if I can't make this shot, then they're just going to let me shoot this and uh, box me out and run the other way when I shoot this shot. Kareem, why do you think other players in the NBA don't work as much on the hook shot or, or, or haven't perfected the skill like you did? Well, I, I think that other players don't work on the shot because they don't see it for what it is. This is a very high percentage shot that you can get six feet from the basket. Now, as we all know, shooting percentages go up as you approach the basket in distance. It's simple math, but uh, sneaking in here with your back just doesn't seem to be sexy enough or something. <laughs> but if you can get in here and get the defense to commit and make the defense collapse, then you also have passes back out to the perimeter for easy shots. So the center can be a playmaker even though he's not handling the ball, he can cause playmaking situations where he helps his teammates by causing the defense to collapse because he gets the high percentage shots in the paint area. Well, you used to make so many passes, great passes to people that are wide open when they'd try to come and double you. You would always be able to see the floor. 
Is that something that just got better and better as you grew? Uh, I think it, it's something that uh, I worked on in terms of uh, hoping that you had guys on the perimeter that, that could shoot that shot and, and nail it down. Because after they get burned two or three times, then I, I'm going one-on-one -on -one again. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want to come and help and have their guy uh, be the one that's uh, breaking the back of, of the team's defense. In high school, you must have got double teamed a lot. Uh, triple got teamed. double teamed a lot uh, and had, you know, we play games with one guy in front of me and one guy behind me. But that uh, gave my teammates uh, rebounding opportunities and wide open layups uh, when, when the other team was not playing uh, attentive defense. We hear a lot about positioning, catching the ball, and then chinning the ball because they're saying that it's a, it's a great opportunity for you to kind of survey the floor before you go into your move. Now, were you one who kind of chinned it or you did other things with it as well? Well, anytime I would rebound, I would always take the ball in under my chin. Um, but keeping it here enables you to see everything that you need to see and uh, it's, it's not blocking. Sometimes you, c you can hold it up here and it's out of the way and anybody coming to reach, you can get the ball to their man. As soon as you see their hands come into your field of vision, you know someone's open for the, for the jump shot. But it takes teamwork and uh, an understanding between the, the pivot player and the perimeter player as to where they're going to be and where they want the passes and how you're going to set up uh, going to the open space for the easy open jump shot when the defense collapses. Okay, we've seen the hook coming in the middle. We've seen the drop step. About how many moves do you think a great pivot player normally would just need down there? A great pivot player only needs two moves. Something where he's the threat coming into the paint, and something where he's the threat going baseline. And that works on either side. Mm -hmm. So I, I would do that on this side. On, on uh, the, the left side here, I would get a shot right here where there's no very little help that can come. So this shot here on this baseline, or complementing it, turning this way for the, using the glass. So you hear, I need 38 moves in the post. If you have two, one's, one sets up the other. One sets up the other, and the most important moves are the moves that you, that you use to get to this position with someone behind you. Mm -hmm. Once you get that person behind you, it's a lot easier. You also have to develop the strength in your lower body to hold this position, because people are gonna try and push you off. If you can hold this position, then that, that sets you up for lob shots which is what uh, Shaquille O'Neal is so great at because people in front of him because of his size and he just holds that position, he's strong enough, they pass it over and he's in there with, with no defense between him and the hoop. And if you say, you know, you've seen the evolution of basketball and you say, you know what, this is kind of missing from the fundamentals. This is what big men need to get back to and it will be much more effective. What would that one thing be? Uh, to get the, the whole team to, to buy into the concept of high percentage shots. These shots in here are high percentage shots. You got your feet in the paint, you're, you're shooting you know, eight, six feet. That's good. That's how we wanted to play in the park. You know, we didn't want to be out there. Right. We wanted to be right here. Mm -hmm. The closer you can get to that hoop, the more your shots are going to drop. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea is to get the team to buy into the concept of we want the high percentage shot. Mm -hmm. An open shot in the paint is a great shot. It's, a, it's much better than a, a, a wide open three point shot. Mm -hmm. If you can get more of these, you're going to win more games. So there you have it. So on the offensive end, positioning, turning in, fundamentals, getting one go to move that goes every time towards the middle that sets up everything else. It, they, they've got to complement each other. Just like uh, you guards work on, I'm great on my moves with my right hand getting getting past the defense. But my left hand, mm -hmm. well, when, when they start playing your right hand all the time and you don't have the left hand, you're not a professional, mm -hmm. okay? You have to be professionally prepared and be able to go in either direction. It's the same in here. If I can't complement my moves into the paint with something going this way, pretty soon they're gonna take what I do well away from me and I have nothing else to use. But when I have something to use going in either direction, I'm always the threat and that's how I help my team. There we have it. Fundamentals right here. Alex Thanks. is going to be our next hook shot taker going into the NBA, right? <laughs> Could I ask one question here? Sure. When you were at UCLA, they ruled out the dunk play. Did that help your game or did that hurt your game? I, I don't think it hurt or helped my game 
in either way. Uh, everybody was playing by the same rules. Uh, the shots that I had the opportunity to dunk, I just laid those up and we kept playing. That's all that was about. All right. That's what. That's good when you're good enough that they make a rule to stop everyone else from doing it. Because basically, it was the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rule. It was the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rule. It was the Lou Alcindor rule at that time. But you know what? But it had whiskers on it. It looked like Stalin, but actually, yeah, it was my rule. That's, that's great. So I'm, I'm just going to bump you in your lower body. Now, when I start bumping you, what you want to do, you want to sit. Okay? See how. How, how much more difficult it is. You can, you can fight for that spot when you sit. But if you're standing up straight like you were, mm -hmm. I can just I can walk you right off of that position. And it doesn't even look like it. So you come in here and, and you, you get, get low. Yeah, right. Now Kenny's going to you tell Kenny where you want the ball. And now you go. Perfect. Now he's shooting a jump hook. Now the only difference between a jump hook and, and the way I shoot, I shoot it with a step. He's shooting it, he's coming in, he's planning, and then jumping off two feet. But the motion is exactly the same. Ah, see, now I took that from you. You should have spun baseline on that. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm here. There Good. you go. Learns quickly. That's it. Kareem, we talk about repetition. How many hook shots would you take a day? How many would you take going? To well, I would shoot 100 in close and then 100 on the uh, perimeter, on the 12-foot uh, um, mark. OK. And then, I, then I'd shoot 300 in the middle from you know about 8 feet. So that's a full day's work. Well, yeah, but <laughs> it's the tools of your trade. No question. All right. We only got 999 to go, Alex. <laughs> there it is. And after a while, you develop instincts, right. OK? You feel me. You know where I'm playing. You don't have to see me. That You just go where I'm not. You just go where the defense isn't. Last one in there. Oh. Good job. Instincts, 300, 100, didn't take five. It takes 300 a day. That's the difference. Well, coach, let's say if I'm just starting out and I need to know an offense or a practice plan, what would you do or what would you show people watching the program to kind of, I'm just getting started out. I need to know what's going on. Well, we always start off with a light jog around the court just to warm up the body. A lot of people want to stretch right off the bat, and I think you need to warm up your body before you start stretching. So we do a little jogging, then we do a little stretching. And then our beginning drills are kind of a half-speed warm-up drills, jogging, um, V-cuts, uh, things of that nature, ball handling drills. And then we'll speed up a little bit of fast break drills, and then we'll go into some of our uh, specialties of the day if we're working on a certain um, defense set or offense set, we might do some introducing. Then we'll do some shooting drills. But uh, probably 70% of our practice, 60% is defense. And we spend it mostly on the man-to-man uh, -man side just because it carries over and helps on the, um, when we play zone. Well, let's say you didn't have Kareem and you couldn't run, a, you couldn't just throw the ball inside. What kind of offense can you show us, maybe using your guys to kind of show us a different variation of something simple uh, or just to get started? Well, we have a real simple offense called the power game offense. And what we do with this, you can run man or uh, zone off it uh, with a few variations. It's pretty simplified and it's something I think you could run from the fourth grade level all the way up through high school. Um, and, you know, I'd like to show it to the... Yeah, that's it. Hey, boys, why don't you come out here? We got a ball. Give Jake the ball. We'll start off by showing the power game offense, which would be free throw line extended, Cameron. Uh, it's a 1-2-2 two, two set. Uh, we number our players. Point guard is a, a one man. Right wing is a two. Left wing is a three. Right low post is a four man. And our big man is a five man. 
So when I'm substituting or, uh, during the game, I can say you're at the two spot, you're at the three spot, you're at the one spot. Um, so you know that's how we do it to simplify it. Even numbers were on the right side in this case, odd numbers on the left side. Again, this is a versus zone defense. Usually you're going to find a 2-3 zone in lower level basketball. And we started off with the initial pass, we'll throw to one of the wings. We'll throw the ball out here to Cameron. Here. Now what we do against the zone, our off big man will now come to the high post. And he will place himself a little bit above the free throw line. Now the reason I do that is because there's spacing now in between here. If Alex came across and was down here, one guy could almost get away with guarding two. So we try to get a little spacing here. So now Alex at the high post, Steve's at the low post. Now we ask our low post to play above the block, because otherwise they get too low in the block, they have a hard time getting the baseline shot off. So he stays here. Our one rule is if they play behind the low post, you throw them the ball every time. Uh, Kareem talked about it earlier, people having confidence and, and the good percentage shot and that's by why you give the ball down here, because a lot of good things happen when you go inside first. So if the ball is thrown in here to Steve, he gets the ball, we, we do this. Now, our off guard, our point guard always swings to the short 17. The free throw line's 15 feet, so when we refer to short 17, it's about right in here. It's about 17 feet from the basket. And our wing doesn't go baseline, but he goes right here. Uh, uh, move up a little bit, Mike, right here. Now, when he has the ball here, once uh, Cameron throws it in, we, we give him the option to relocate. Because a lot of times the zone, once the ball is thrown in, they'll turn to look to see where the ball is, look back, and now Cameron's relocated. So now Steve has an option. He can make his post move, and I hope he has a go-to move like Kareem does. He can make his move, or he can uh, hit Cameron, who relocated out here for maybe a jump shot. We have the high post when the ball goes low, he will drop step and cut down the middle of the key. And a lot of times you'll see the uh, post be able to hit him, cutting down the middle for a layup because the guard guarding him has lost sight of uh, the, the high post where he can slip through. If that isn't open, he can always swing the ball out here and skip it out to the point guard. Now what we have now is Alex at low, Jake will back out a little bit. Steve's coming back up here to the high post. He's going to be a foot above the free throw line. And we're right here in this set. We're right back to where we were, just on the opposite side of the court. Jake swings the ball to the wing. Jake swings to the weak side. Now, the one thing with the wing, if he's here with the ball, if Mike's got the ball here, come on, Mike, out here at the wing, we tell the offside wing to go diagonal. He'll go to the baseline. It's an easier pass. Jake's open on the weak side in the short 17. If he dribbles the ball to the baseline to get a better angle to pass it into the low post, and Jake's going to step up some, and Cameron's going to step up some, because you don't want to throw through the rim and try to skip pass to the guy on the opposite side. This is the basic setup of the power game offense versus zone. Now let's go back to our spots. Let's say the team's playing man-to-man. -man. This is where it, gets, it makes it a lot easier because a lot of times teams will uh, shift on you, they'll change up defenses, and man-to-man -man in the younger age levels is very difficult to put a, uh, an offense together because you don't get a lot of offensive practice time to work on a motion offense. So the only variation we do on power game when they go to man is we stack our guards behind the low post, Mike, and we ask them to develop a forward lead, which we've talked about earlier on this, on our program. And, and what we do is, he has the option. He can pop out if he can get open that way. If he has to come up the key here, and maybe arm bar me where he puts his arm into me and gets open, he's there, the other wing's there. And now, on the initial pass to the wing, instead of him just flashing high, this is where we do our screen across, which is another drill we've done in our program showing how to defend it and how to use it. And what uh, Steve will do, he'll come across here, set a pick for Alex. Alex can go high or low. Then Steve, which Kareem showed earlier on the pick and roll, he will sit down and he will open up, not turn this way, open up, and come up here to the high post. 
And right there, we're in our power game set again. Now, versus man-to-man, -man, if Cameron has the ball and they want to front the low post, like Cream talked about earlier with how they do Shaq, the ball goes to high post. Now, he walls me up. He throws straight down to Alex, and he's, Alex got a layup. At the same time, when Jake passes the ball to the wing here, he's going to exchange on the weak side. So once he passes the ball to the wing, Jake's going to go screen for Mike. So we've got a little bit of motion on the weak side, which helps out because sometimes that weak side defender that Coach Jason talked about earlier, who sits in this key, he can't just sit here. He's going to start coming up here with his man. So we get some motion on the weak side to possibly get them the ball. Now, if they don't get the ball, we can throw the ball to the point guard. He can swing it here to the wing. Now we cross. He will come hard first. Alex comes right off his hip. They exchange, and we're right back into it. And it's a real e easy flow. So that's the basics of the power game offense versus zone and versus man. Now we have a few set plays that we will run with the power game offense. Um, and I'll demonstrate the man to man one right now. Let's go back to your spots. Stack it behind, Mike. Now, to get your people open, sometimes just a flare cut out is not, not effective. So we have a rule. Two man goes across. Two man always sets a screen for the three man. Two man comes here, sets a screen. Three comes off him, comes off Steve. Then the two man comes out. Now, what you're thinking is, how come I'm always the one setting the screen? Why can't I be the one going out there? Well, usually if you're the one setting the screen, you're going to be the one open because they'll flow to that guy. So this is another way to get into the offense, into the man-to-man -man offensive power game. We also have, come here, both of you come back to your spots. We also have an overload off the offense. So now let's have both wings cross again, two-man screen for three-man. Cameron comes out there, the free throw line extended. What is free throw line extended? Here's your free throw line, extend out to the three-point arc. Ball's passed to the wing. What we do is he screens across. Steve comes hard to the block. Alex reverse pivots, comes up here, and we bring Mike to the corner. Now what we have versus man-to-man -man is a complete overload on one side of the court where the, the, it causes a lot of havoc. If this guy in the corner can shoot the ball, you can shoot, right, Mike? Yeah, very good. We, right here, we can get an isolation here, and especially if they want to turn in front here, we can throw over or work the high-low. So we like to sometimes use the overload as part of this offense. One other play we run, let's go bring it out front and set it up again, is we'll run a stack out of this with our two posts. And what we have here is we'll move Alex over here on top above Steve and we'll move Cameron over here with Mike. Now both of you are going to be above the block. Step up, both of you be above the block. Now as Jake comes down, what we'll try to do is here is Mike will pop out here, Cameron will go out here, and we'll take Steve, he'll come off the double. Steve will then flash hard here to the middle, drawing the center, and Alex will turn here and slip behind for the lob. That's another set play we use off this, and it's effective against the zone as well as man to man. One other option we have, let's go back to our original set, is off the, uh, we'll go back to the zone. We'll go back to the zone. You guys pop out here to the wings. We'll dribble Phil. Let's say he's having a hard time getting the wing or we want just a different look. Jake can dribble at the wing. Now we can do two things. Cameron can go out. Mike can replace Jake. And we're right in our set. And as soon as he gets free throw line extended, then Alex can come here to high post. If it's zone or it's man-to-man, -man, he can screen across. Just a different look, just a different way of moving people around. Okay, let's go back, set it up again. Next thing we can do off this is a dribble fill with a shallow cut. And what we do here is Jake's dribbling here to the wing. Cameron will come down and just shallow out to this spot here. Now all of a sudden, say he's our best shooter, I've taken him out of there, so they're not so used to guarding him there. Now we've relocated him up here, maybe for the shot. If not, and he dribbles there, he's not open. 
we're right under offense. If it's man to man, he's going to exchange, come up. If it's zone, we're just going to pop here. So different variations we can run off the same offense. So as a coach, it's easy on me to say, we're in power game, and if they're in man, fine. We just adjust. If they're in zone, we adjust. So that's what makes power game effective for the young kids all the way up to the um, varsity basketball team. Well, we're here with one of the all-time greats in NBA history, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And uh, one of the first questions I want to ask you is people see your size and your stature, but how important were the fundamentals of the game for you? Uh, for me, the fundamentals were everything. If it were not for the fundamentals, I would have just been another tall, aspiring athlete to try to play basketball. Uh, getting the fundamentals at the right time in my life certainly helped. Uh, you know, I was still in grade school and got some good fundamental training, and it really helped me throughout my whole career. Well, did you learn more? Did you have a base early, like in, at Powell Memorial High School in New York, or be, even before that in grade school? Really, in grade school, I, I started to learn uh, just certain key things uh, that, that were drilled into me uh, by my coach, Beryl Hopkins. And um, about the eighth grade, I started to, to get my hands on a few free passes to Madison Square Garden, where I could go watch Bill Russell and Will Chamberlain. And that was like a, a great seminar to attend. One of, the, one of the things that you see now, uh, you see a lot of athleticism and you see a lot of great plays because of uh, the highlights, so to speak. What do you think that most players now kind of lack in terms of fundamentals? Well, in terms of fundamentals, most players uh, aren't understanding how they interact with the other guys on the team. They think it's all about what one individual does that, that is so extraordinary, when actually it's about what a group of guys do together. It's always that last pass to the open guy who gets the easy shot that, that makes it an easy game. Uh, and basketball is a very fundamental easy game. You just have to understand what those are and try to apply yourselves uh, to, to using them. And uh, that, that's how teams come together. Well, if you probably had a list of a top 100 coaches ever to coach basketball, a lot of your coaches would be in that list from high school, grade school, and in the NBA, so, and college as well. So, how was it playing for great coaches? How important is that? Well, I think when you get the message, which is um, it's about the extra pass, it's about helping your teammates, knowing where the ball is, and understanding what you want to do as a group. Those aren't a whole lot of lessons to learn. There are a whole lot of applications to those lessons, but th those aren't a whole lot of lessons to learn. Mm -hmm. So once you learn those lessons and how to apply them to the game, you become a better team player. And uh, when you have a group of guys, that understand that it's, it's even better. Uh, I remember my high school coach uh, would, would tell us, we'd come back, we'd go see the, the Boston Celtics play. And my high school coach would ask, uh, ask guys on the team, all right, how many guys on the Celtics scored 20 points? Nobody on the Celtics scored 20 <laughs> points, you know? You had a whole, uh, uh, about six or seven guys scoring between nine and 18 points. And these guy always took the shot and they won their games easily. If you had to uh, preach one message individually, say, okay, I'm going to try to learn this, the team concept. But individually, there's some fundamental things as a big man that I really have to know and start with. What would be the basis of that? Well, the one key thing for, for big men is to understand what happens around the basket. It's different from any other uh, space on the court. And it's a very crucial space. It's the space where the highest percentage shots are taken, and it's the space where the most rebounds are taken. So you've got to know how to play that area if you're a big man and be effective in there, either keeping your man from getting offensive rebounds, blocking shots, or being a scorer yourself and, and, and an effective rebounder. Those are, those are key issues in the paint. Away from the paint, it's about defense, passing, ball handling, seeing who's free, setting people up. But uh, inside the paint, uh, it gets to be quite a, a nasty game. Uh, I know that's where most people start bleeding. Uh, when, you, when you see somebody bleeding on the court, it usually happened in the paint someplace. <laughs> <laughs> now you see, now, now you're coaching and scouting. Now everyone talks about things that guys are lacking. What do you see about the game? You say, man, it's getting better or it's changing? Well, I, I think the athletic ability of, of the young players is extraordinary. Uh, 
there is no want for good athletes. I think uh, what they call the basketball IQ suffers uh, from in, in spots here where people don't understand what to do with all this incredible talent. But in terms of uh, what the guys can do, um, they're extraordinary. And playing with all the great teams, fondest memories, college or NBA? Jeez, I've had so many great memories in the game starting in grade school. I mean, that I've been so privileged. Um, certainly uh, what you go through as a, as a college athlete, you know, trying to reach manhood, uh, that, that makes that a very certain uh, special time for sure. Uh, and then being able to earn a living doing something that you love and did for free in the middle of winter uh, for no money when you were a kid uh, is uh, certainly a privilege and an honor and uh, it's something that, that we all enjoy. Now we're, all, we're both here because it's magic's fundamental of the game, playing with magic. How was that? Well, you know, when you get to play with, with someone who has mastered all the elements of the game in terms of understanding the game and being able to make it happen on the court, uh, you, you've been blessed. Uh, it's, it's a real privilege to, to play with people with that much talent and that much enthusiasm for the game. It, it's infectious, uh, helped prolong my career. So, you know, I have to take my, my hat off and uh, really give some appreciation to uh, Irvin and, and all the rest of the teammates that, that helped make m my career so special. I wasn't as fortunate to have tapes or videos or programs like this to kind of show me from start to finish how to become a better player. Did you have any people that you kind of could look up to and see to get better? Well, I, I have to say that uh, the program that I, I went through at my grade school, St. Jude School in, uh, in Manhattan, we had a coach. Um, he might not have been the greatest coach, but he, he, he stuck to it and I learned a few things uh, from him and then also from watching the professional game. Uh, and then my high school coach, Jack Donahue, was extraordinary and really was able to tell me the things I needed to watch and learn from in, in watching the professional game. I, I was able to do that. Uh, I went from there to, to coach John Wooden. How good can you get? You right. <laughs> I, I, I've been really blessed that way and uh, I was able to, to learn from the masters and uh, being raised in New York in that, that hotbed of basketball, you know what that's about, uh, starting in grade school really, uh, high school, college, everybody appreciated the game there and uh, the game was played at a very sophisticated level and uh, that, that, that was something that I aspired to. How would you think a program like this would have helped you? Geez, I think a program like this would have helped me uh, an, an awful lot in that uh, it would make it clear where you need to go with your talent. That's, that's the most difficult thing uh, for, for kids to, to figure out uh, what to do with that talent. Well, we figured out every perspective that you can possibly have from the inside out. And I think knowing the fundamentals, as Kareem has just said, knowing the fundamentals of the game is what made him a great player. Not that he was his size, his stature. He could have just been another player if he didn't have the fundamentals of the game. And that's why a program like this is important. Hi, I'm Magic Johnson. Welcome to the Fundamentals of Basketball. <laughs> to be the best, you have to learn from the best. The Fundamentals of Basketball. You're here with Magic Johnson and all my friends. I call them the Dream Team. One of the most important things about basketball is getting your balance. So now we're going to go over defense. Yes, sir. 
you know, shooting is you need to balance, but defense is more particularly you need it than anything else. Absolutely. Defense balance is the most thing. You try to get your head over the center of your body, which is the heaviest part of your body. If your head gets too far forward, obviously you're going to be too far forward. You might fall forward and fall on your face, get too far back on your heels. Obviously, you can get crossed up, break your ankles. You know how anything about that. You I never I broke ankles. some ankles. You broke I some ankles. Even, no, no, yeah. no, no. I've gotten broken as well. Right. But one of the things that, you know, since we have the team out, you know, because one, you need quickness. You need preparation and Correct. you need balance. Correct. So first, when I blow the whistle, guys, we're just going to get in our defensive stance. So the first thing we do is get in our stance. OK, here we go. OK. Oh, hold, 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 hold. Coach, that was pretty good. I like the way they say defense. But see, on offense and defense, sometimes you're on offense. Mm -hmm. you know, all of a sudden, you're on defense. So you have to go quickly. Right. So the whistle, when the whistle blows, they got to get there quickly. Absolutely. Because we don't want the people at home thinking that they can take their time. So we gonna get, we're not going to take our time. So OK, when I blow the whistle, that means everybody. You're going to get down. <laughs> Okay, now we're in our stance. And if you notice, see the stance is balanced because I shouldn't be able to really push guys over if they're balanced because one of the things that you want to imagine, pretty good defensive stances here, is that my feet and my shoulders are over. I don't want to be too wide. I don't want to be too tight. I want to have them shoulders length apart. It's almost like I got an imaginary short stick right between my legs and I'm right here and I'm, I'm balanced. Now, another way to... Practice your balance. What's your, what's your first name again? Danny. Danny. Let's say me and Danny stand up. Me and Danny about to have a fight. I'm going to pick a fight with Danny right here on this program. All right, I'm going to pick a fight with you. You ready? You re Wait. The first thing Danny did, watch. He, <laughs> finally, he did the bob and weed. But the first thing he did, he got low. Because he said, if Kenny hits me, I don't want to fall back. My teammate's going to laugh at me. So he got into a stance. It's the same, same thing in defense, but your hands are open. So that's the thing. So now we're going to get back into our stance, OK? We're going to blow our whistle. OK, now we're in a great stance. So the next thing is footwork. We're going to get to later on in the program how to get to this part, but you still have to have quick feet, coach, to do it. So we're going to do a couple of drills just to get our foot, feet quicker. We want to be have quick feet. So when I blow the whistle the first time, we're going to pack. Just getting our feet quicker. We're going to just wake ourselves up before we get in a defensive position, OK? Defense. OK, let me hear him. 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 When I blow it in, we're going to stop. Good. Next time, we're going to pat. Now, sometimes you got to move in defense. So we're just going to turn and get back. We're just going to turn and get back. So I blow it, go pat, turn, get back. Got it? OK, let's go. Let me see the feet. Let me see him. Let me see him. And back. Let me hear him. Let me hear him good. Next time, balance. So we're working on balance right now because we talk about being balanced, so we're going to work on our balance. So we turn here, and then we got back on balance. Now we're going to turn here, get back. Then we're going to turn halfway and get back on balance, OK? Just to get out working on our balance because that's the most important part of defense because guys will come up to you, and they'll bump you. And if you're off balance, you're going to get shook, OK? Let me hear them. Quick Good. Feet. Good. Now, same thing. I went here. Boom. I went here. Boom. Now I'm going to go here and back. Same thing. Got it? Balance. It's our balance. Let's go, Marla Day. Let's go. Quick feet, quick feet. All the way. Three quarters. All the way. Good. Let me hear him. Let me hear him. Keep working. Keep working. Can't hear him yet. Keep working. Keep working. Good. Same thing. I went here. Boom. I went halfway. Boom. I went three quarters. Boom. Now, I go here and back. All the way. Balance. Let's go. Let's go. All the way around. Turn the back around. Let me hear him. Let me hear him. Move feet. Move feet. Good. Now we got our balance. Now we got our balance. Now we got to know how to move with our balance. Before we get to Coach, because I'm bringing Coach Jason out. Before we get to one-on-one -on -one defense, we got to know how to move. So the one thing we're going to do now is practice our movement. OK, let's get one line here, behind here, one line. And we're just going to follow the line up, because we need to practice our movement. Because sometimes in basketball, you got to chase somebody. So I'm chasing a guy, and I'm going to run up. So now I get here. I catch him. I slide across. Now, the slide is very important, coach. Yes, it is very important. The slide is very important. So why don't you go over the slide? Okay, most important thing about a slide is make sure your feet do not become 
get too close, more than six inches apart. Okay, we, all, we already got the heel-toe relationship, which Coach Smith talked about earlier. Next thing you do, when you move your feet, you don't want to bring your feet too close together. Okay, if you do, you'll stand up, come out of your stance, and then the offensive player will go by you. Okay, that's very important. So now, Coach said, I don't want my feet too close. I don't want to cross my feet. Look at me in slow motion. Am I on balance? Never. Okay, I don't want to hop. Because in the air, can I change direction if the offensive player changes direction? No. So I want my back foot to stay on grounded. I want to point and my back foot stays grounded. Now, I come back. I'm backpedaling. The defense is here. I get here. I stop them. I slide across again. Okay, the defense is coming, and we're going to do an imaginary charge. Guys, come in here. We're going to take the charge. Oh, good help your teammate. Thank you, you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. There it is. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go. You make a point about the charge? Okay, let's make a point about the charge. One quick point about the charge. When you take a charge, it is very important that you tuck your chin when you fall. You don't want to throw your head back because then you're going to hit your head on the court. The next important thing you need to do, when you fall down, you tuck your chin so you prevent your head from falling. Make sure you bring your knees up. Why do you want to bring your knees up? Because the offensive player has to go somewhere, and if he comes down on you, you want to protect yourself. Okay, let's go. Let's start it off. Let's go. Boom. Good work. One. Good. Boom. Slide. Good. Slide. One more behind him. Go. Take the charge. Hold it. Hold it. Take the charge. Get up. Boom. Ah. Boom. Good. 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 Be quick. Be quick. Good. Move your feet. Good. One more. One more. Last one. Last one, big fella. Come, Come on. on. Slide. Slide. Get there. Slide. Get there. Take the charge. Good. Nice job. Now we have the movement. Now we have the movement. This is what we call our mass drill as well as we're going to do some post-defensive drill. Now this segment is all about defense. And of course, he's one of the best shot blockers. So Amari is going to walk us through this whole thing. And we're just going to give you some pointers on how to play good, fundamentally sound defense. All right, Coach, Jason, you got him. Here we go, guys. You ready? When I say defense, stance, slap the floor, and get down your defense stance. Stance. So what you see here is, you see them sliding back and forth when a defender has the ball, they just slide. Now the ball's on the ground, they die for the loose ball right there. You like this drill, yeah, Amari? Yeah, it's a great drill, man. It, it teaches the kids how to, how to move their feet and, and, and this footwork. That's right. Loose ball! That's right. That's right. Exactly. And loose balls are always the key. Defensive yeah. rebound and loose balls in a game will always beat you. Now you see that big step, what we call that, the big step slide. <clears throat> Another thing too on defense is better to watch the hips. If you watch the ball, you tend to get faked out a lot. Exactly. So if you watch the core part of the body, then that's, 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 that's right. And, and what Mario's talking about is so important. You got to definitely watch them hips. And, and, and the key is to be on balance when you're playing good defense. So if you have good stance, then you can play good defense. But if you're not in a good proper stance, if your feet too uh, close together, if they're too far apart, you're going to get beat every single time. OK. Now we're going to go into our one-on-one -on -one defense and how to stop somebody when they get the basketball or deny them from getting the basketball. But Coach is going to go into the structure and the balance of good defensive attacking. Yes, we're going to show you some defensive slides right now. One of the most important things about when you're doing defensive slides is make sure you don't open up the game. A lot of people tend to get to a point to where they have the guy, if I'm guarding Coach Smith right here, I have him squared up. If he makes a move, say a jab step or something, I got to be careful that I don't open up too much and allow him to give him free reign to the basket. So right now, we're going to work on that real slowly, okay, working on footwork. These guys are going to take two or three uh, slides to the left, and they're going to work on their drop step, making sure they don't open up too much, and then two or three slides to the right, and on them down the court. Here we go, guys.
Notice how they keep their feet apart, making sure they don't come six inches. It's closer than six inches together. Next group. Okay, guys, kind of go outside. Guys, go this way. Okay, next group. Go up to the side. Keep your feet apart. Keep your feet apart. Make sure you're working. Make sure you're sitting down. Make sure your head's over the center of your body. And you're working. Get down and work. Let's go. Sit down, big man. Come on. That's it. Work. Good. Okay, let's go. Around. Okay, now we're going to incorporate the hands and speed it up a little bit. For that, we're going to go two at a time. So let's just get two lines right here. Okay, speed it up a little bit and make sure you get your hands. Okay? One thing important about when with your hands is whatever foot is forward, that's the hand that's down. That's your dig hand. This hand is end up in the passing lane. So you look something like this. So if you switch, your hands must switch with them. Here we go, guys. Make sure you're moving. Let's go. Switch your hands. Go. Good. Let's go. Good. Good feet. Good. Go. Work, 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 work. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Get down, get down, Josh. Good. Let's go. Good. Stay down. Keep your feet apart. Good. Let's go. Down, big man. Good. Off to the side. Let's go. Very good. One of the good things about being a great defender is once guys get the ball, sometimes it's too late. So you have to learn how to stop people from getting the basketball, the only way to stop them. So right, the first thing I want to do is I want a good, good defensive position. So I have my, my foot in the, one in the passing lane and coach is going to be the offensive player now. And I, I have one foot in the passing lane and I have my hand in the passing lane deterring a pass. My thumb is down in the passing lane. This hand, my free hand, no, I'm not pulling him. No, I'm not pushing him, but it is resting. It is resting on him. And I'm able to see him and know exactly where he wants to go. So now I use what we call our peripheral vision, where I can look straight ahead, I can still see coach, and I can still see the ball here. So I'm using my peripheral vision to see both. So now, as he goes up, I'm still, my head's not even turning the whole time. I'm doing my defensive slides. Now, coach goes back. I can still see it. I can still see both as I'm backpilling. All of a sudden, coach wants to go through. Uh-oh, I can't see both. Now, I have to open up so I can see. Now, some people will say, well, if you open up, you can't see him. But he's behind the basket. Nobody can score. Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson can score from behind the basket. So now, it's all right if I don't see him. I can feel him. And now, once I get back here, I do what I can. I step on this bug, this box and I close back up and I use my peripheral vision again and now my thumb is down and it's resting on him. So now we can do the drill where we just slide up, open up, slide across. I'll go, you go behind me, Rip, because I'm an old man now, Rip, so I don't know if I can get enough on it. So I'm gonna go up, slide, I get here, I open up, I slide across, I close, and I get hit. Ready. Do it again. <laughs> you need a defender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a defender. Yeah. You need an yeah, I'm, pretend I'm going up, the ball's here, I go here, slide open up, boom, good, close up on me, good, perfect. I can't get it. I can't score if I don't have it. Very good point, Coach. One, one thing that I will say that a lot of kids tend to do, and you talked about pulling and grabbing jerseys, that inside hand, what I, would, what I tell our kids is make it a fist. So you put the fist right here so maybe you don't have the intention to grab like some kids tend to do these days. So we close our fist and put it on that, on their chest right there and on the rest. Okay, no question about it. Now, Coach, we can get in some live action. Oh, absolutely. You ready to go? We, I need a one-on-one. -on -one. You go one-on-one. -on -one. We get an <laughs> offense a and a defense, oh, okay. and, we, and we talk about denying the ball. Okay. Right now, we're going to have Kyle Brown be the denial and have Mike Gary to be the offensive player. So Kyle's just going to do the same thing that Mr. Hamilton just did, okay? Except he's going to hopefully get some sweat going, like me. Here we go. I'll be the offensive. I'm going to be out here, and I'm going to be the passer. If he's open, I'm giving him the ball. If he's not, I can't get it to him. Because generally, in a game, I'm the point guard. I've been a point guard all my life. Rip Hamilton's a great shooter. I'm not going to wait for Rip for seven seconds to get open. If Rip's not really open in four seconds, three seconds, I have to turn and go the other way to the other side of the floor. So if he plays defense for four seconds, that's all you have to do, play defense for four seconds. If you can't play defense for four seconds, you should be out there anyway. That's all you have to do is four seconds of defense and we'll go the other way. Okay, let's go. See the ball and man. Good. One, two, three, 
four. Oh, I gotta go the other way. Gotta go the other way. That's great defense. I gotta go the other way. Okay. Let's get two more out here, Coach. Two more. Another important thing about defense is talking. As you heard, Kyle was talking through that whole segment. Here we go, Blake. Let's go. Blake's on D. Let's go. Okay. See the ball in man. Good. One, two, three, four. Oh, I gotta go the other way. I'm gonna go ahead and take this shot. <laughs> I need two more. We need two more, Coach. I need somebody to get the ball. Somebody come get the ball, please. One, two, three, four. Good defense. Good defense. Correct hand. All right. Last one. Last one. Let's keep going. Let's go. One, two. Oh, 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 oh. Now, do you see that? You see that? He's open. The one thing that he did not do. That hand that was free, he didn't have it on him. They must be brothers, cousins, or relatives. Because if you're a relative, you stay here. If you don't know the guy, you get up on him. So that's why he wasn't able to go back door. So we're not going to be relatives and cousins and teammates here. Get up on him. Thank you. One, two, three, good, four. Oh, I got to go the other way. He didn't get open. I got to take the shot again. I got to take it myself. OK, the next thing we're going to talk about is closing out. Because a lot of times, you're late. Sometimes the guy did get open, and you have to go and rotate over to him. There's a correct way, footwork and balance to close out so you don't get beat every time. So the first thing, Rip's the best shooter in basketball. I have to run at him fast. So the first thing I want to do, I want to treat everybody like Rip Hamilton. He throws it, I want to run out fast. I'm going to run out fast. Now notice my last two steps. One, two, I slid. I'm not going to continue to run because if I continue to run and Swift is a great shooter and I just continue to run and try to go, he's going to fake up and go by me. I'm not going to be on balance. So the one thing I want to do now, I want to have a hand up as I run. I want to run and come out in a defensive position with a hand up. The hand is very important. You see a lot of guys closing out on shooters such as Rip with their hands at the chest. That is not going to deter a good shooter from shooting the ball. Make sure your hand is extended way, as high as you can get it to try to alleviate a shot. And I'm going to give you all all a secret right here. There's no way in the world that I can stop him from getting a jump shot. Only thing I can do is make it contested because he already is ahead of me. So. I have to realize that I'm just trying to make it contested. I don't, if I try to block it, he goes by me. I have to contest the shot. That's the most important thing. It's impossible for you to get here to here. But if you contest it and come on balance, it's a tough shot. Okay, he's closing out. Boom, good. Last two steps, you would uh, slide. My running out, then choppy steps, two choppy steps. Okay, next. Let's go. Let's get a line. Let's go. Run out. Let's go. Good. 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 Next. Next. Good. Let's go. Good. Good. Good defense. Right there. That was good right there. Good. 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 Last two. Run out. Choppy. Good. 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 Let's go. Go. Oh, that's good. Okay, now. Now you got a good player. He's like, offensive player, I'm going to figure this out. I'm not going to just sit here and let you close out on me. So now, as he close out, he fakes, and you have to cover him for two dribbles and get to your spot and hands up. So it will look like this. We have our shoot out there. I'm running out. Slow motion. I'm running out. I close out. He dribbles. I slide, slide. Hands up. Slide, slide, hands up. You be our shooter, every defender. Up, oh, slide, hands up. Good. Next. Let's go, let's go. Good. Oh, good defense. That's on the tape. We're going to get that in tape. Let's go next. Good. Good. Oh, offensive. Good job. Good job. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. Let's go, let's go. Good. 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 Hold on, hold on. Switch. Let me be the offensive player for a second. Okay. If that, let's start like if I did the offensive play. So now I'll be the offensive player. Same thing. I catch. Same thing. Fake. One, two. Good. Next. Let's go. Let's go. Good. 
Good. Good job. Good job. Good. Good. Hands up. Good. Next. Good. Oh, I might shoot over the little guy. Oh, no. Good defense. Okay, let's go. One more. Last one. Last one. Good. Good. Good job. And a five. Yeah. Great defense. It's balance. A good understanding of what it takes coming out on balance. Coming out on balance, getting your man under control, your body, cutting off the baseline, perfect defense, coach. Perfect defense. Best thing, and balance is the most important thing when it comes to defense. Like I said, the head is the heaviest part of your body, especially in a closeout, you must swing those arms to help get your head to go back over your body, to make sure your body's centered. Very important in a closeout. Now, Rip, you played on some great defensive teams, great championship defensive team. Now, how important was help side defense and being able to help your teammates? Oh, man, it was very important because you just like you got to be on a chain. You know, everybody got to have each other's back, you know, and uh, I think that's one thing we was committed to all year. You know, we, we figured that our defense would lead to easy baskets. And, uh, you know, we always on the same page and that's very important. Well, we're going to get Coach Jason to come out with a couple of the modern day guys and show us about how to be on that chain, how to be together, and how to help. Because nobody, I'm going to tell you now, no one can guard a great offensive player by themselves. No one else. So you have to have help. Absolutely. What we're going to do now, we're just going to show you a drill. The, the guys are going to make it a lead, a forward lead, make a pass, and the weak side guy is going to get the help side, and this is going to pass it back and forth. And we're going to show you how they get from being guarding the ball and getting to the help side position. Okay, right now, can you, or I can pass I'll the ball the right guard. I'll be the okay. point guard. Coach Smith's going to be the point guard. These guys are getting denial position. We're denying the ball and the pass back out. Okay, so the coach is going to slap the ball. You guys get your forward lead. Here we go. Let's go ahead and pop out. Gets the lead. Okay, gets the help side. Good. Boom. Gets the help. Boom. Okay, good. Hold it. One of the most important things about defense is one of the most important things, I should say, is moving when the ball isn't moving in the air. And these guys did a good job of moving while the ball is in the air, getting, positioning them themselves, ball you man, according to where their defender, where the offensive player is and the ball is. And that's very important. Well, the, the most important thing I saw is, and Rip, you can attest to this, talk. Yeah, absolutely. And if you listen, absolutely. if you're a good defensive team or a good defensive player, you're going to talk because you're going to tell people where they are and where they're not. So that was the first thing I saw was great. And the second thing that I really saw that I want to, you have to pay attention to is the fact that when you are help side, when you got to help somebody out, you cannot be too far over because your man will be able to cut. You can't be too close because you won't be able to get, you have to be on what we call one pass away and be able to be able to straddle the line and straddle the basket where you could be on both and be able to help. And at the same time, if the ball comes to your man, be a close enough to recover. Correct. And that was what they did well. Correct. Very good. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to move on to three on three on the ball side. So now what we're going to do, we're going to add the point guard. Come up to the top here. We've got the guys, we've got a guy on the block and the guy's going to pop out to the wing. Ball's up top. This drill is very simple and it's, it, it goes with any offense or any defense. Again, the main things is vision, moving when the ball is in the air, and talking. Three things that are very important when you play defense. The three basic principles, I would say. So right now, we've got to have good ball pressure right here. So Blake's going to be up here talking, talking. Man, one pass away, we're in denial. He must also be in a position to help if this, defend, if this offensive player decides to try to take the ball here. Kyle must be able to get here to stop this and to recover back to the pass. Okay, but right now, Jake is going to make the pass to the wing. On this pass, we're going to get this back screen. So Taylor must open up as Danny comes up and sets this back pick. Okay, talking. Okay, Blake is going to jump to the ball, get to the side of this ball. Okay, got the help. Here comes Jake down the block. Taylor helps him through, gets out on the pass back up. Kyle's going to jump to the ball. Jose is going to go down and set a down pick. Kyle's making sure Blake gets through. You notice. On every pass, these guys are jumping to the ball. We call it a, being a man removed. What does that allow? That allows your defensive player to get through a screen so you're not going down and set a double pick. Rip, you might want to talk about double picks. 
when you guys played in the championship this year, you ran your guy, you ran Kobe off a lot of double picks because his men were staying too close together. So if I'm guarding the man coming off, right? Right. Okay, it, it all depends, you know. If you know it's a double screen coming, you know, you want to deny right here. And once he takes off, you want to get on his left shoulder and chase him all around. Mm -hmm. Like Kenny said, if he used his screen, if he used the screen good enough, I'm dead. Right. But my, my whole thing is I got to get help from the big guy. Correct. Because I'm going to force him one way and make sure he goes all the way around the screen so the big man's going to have to help out. Then the opposite big man got to help the, uh, the other big man. Absolutely. So correct. you're all on the chain. Absolutely. Help the helper. That's what co uh, Coach uh, Rip just said. I apologize. Coach, yeah. Coach, yeah. <laughs> He's going to be a like coach one word. day. <laughs> He's going to be a coach one day. Let's, let's start from the beginning. Absolutely. Let's Here start we go. from the beginning. Let's get everybody in their natural spots. Get back in your beginning. So first thing to kind of understand, because I, I we threw some terms out, so we don't want anybody at home to kind of not figure out what we're talking about. He passes. Stop. We say jump to the ball. The ball is where? Here. He's going to jump on this side because now – he is closer to the ball, so he's jumped to the ball. That won't allow him to be picked because now when he goes through, he's able to get through because if he comes this side, the big guy's going to be here, help you out a little bit. He's going to go through, so he jumped to the ball. Now, what's our next step? Now, he's going to what? Jump to the ball because he's going to give him room to get through when the pick is coming. Either way now to go and play defense. So. If your teammate don't help out and he doesn't jump to the ball, then we're all not in the same chain. Absolutely. And then what happens, I bump into you, mm -hmm. you bump into me, and when they get open shots and Rip gets 30 points and wins another championship. <laughs> and he'd be happy with that. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be happy with that. So this is just one simple variation of this drill. You can add back picks to it. Instead of the down pick, instead of the guy on the wing cuts sent this down pick, you can have this guy and you can work on back picks talking on back picks. This guy stepping, getting through, big guy bumping just like we did here. Oh. There's different variations of this drill. We'll go through that right now. Let's go through it you like three it. or four times. No shot. No Pass shot. movement. And all we're doing is coming backing up you and okay, the so first the thing we do the okay. down pick. Jump into the ball. Jump Everybody ball. concentrate we're on jumping talking. to the ball. All right. Jump to the ball. Good. Slide through. Good. All right. Now, Sam, jump to the ball. He's going down. Good. All right. So let's start again. Go set the pick. Go we'll up set top. The back pick. Set the pick. Good. Jump, jump to the, the ball, ball. Taylor. Good. Good. There it is. Start Good. again. Jump Down to the ball. Pick, get through, team. Get through. Good. Good. Perfect. Got to talk. Got to talk. Good. good. All right. Perfect. Very good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to institute the back pick real quick, and we're going to go to it two or three times again. So instead of this wing, after, instead of this, after this pass, wait, going down to set this down pick, after he makes that pass, his post player is going to come up here and set this back pick. Now, it's very important, again, like Coach Smith said, especially on a back pick, you must talk. And not just talk, talk, talk early. Loud. Early and loud. Early and loud. Because I'm going to tell you know. what, as a point guard, <laughs> and as a guard, <laughs> if my big guy yeah. does not tell me that this back pick is coming and set a back pick, and I get hit, who's setting the pick? Oh, I get hit. Oh, yeah. He is open. Yeah. I get hit. I hurt. The next time I have the ball on offense, my big guy is not getting the basketball. Because I'm not giving it to him because he's not talking on defense. I'm going on the other side and somebody else else is getting it until he learns to talk. Absolutely. So why don't we go through that two or three times and get it, make sure we're talking, jump to the pass, all the stuff that we've been working on. Here we go, guys. Set the back jump pick. Jump to the ball. Back pick. Good. Good. Slide through. Good. 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 Pass. Now go set the back Good. pick. Good. Back there. pick. Back pick. Comes. Slide through. Good. 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 Set the back pick. Good. Perfect. There Perfect. It is. Good hands. Pick, Way to jump to the ball. Good. Good. He's through. One more time, one more time. Ready to Got it. Through. Good, very good. Good job. Very good. Now another thing, another pick that is common in basketball is a cross screen. Mm -hmm. And you probably know that being down here with the big guys down time, all the time. So we got a guy on the block right here. Put another guy on the weak side block. Be Kyle. Okay. This side. You guys come over here. And then the coach will be right here. Okay. So all this... How this drill starts is very easy, okay? On this pass right here to the wing, the guy on the strong side block is going away to set this pick, okay? He's coming across, trying to get this pass right here. You're looking inside if you have it, you throw it. If not, you throw it back to the coach. On the pass back out, you go set the down pick, okay? During this whole time, we were talking and communicating with your teammates, okay? We get to right here and the coach makes this pass, okay? And that is the rotation of it. Now. I'm going to show you how to defend this cross screen real quick. 
Okay? If I'm playing the defender, I'm Jake right here, and I'm guarding Jake. Right now, we've worked on, with the two, with the two on two, we worked on getting to help side. So right now, I'm in a help side position, and I'm talking. I can help on this lob pass if, he, if this player is full fronting. I'm right here to help on this lob pass over here, okay? And I'm also here. You got a lot of things to do in help side. There's just about eight different things. So on this pick right here, Taylor's talking to me, pick, 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 pick. It is very important that this offside guy meet this guy coming across this lane, okay? Force him to go where you want him to go. So you step inside this pick, you bump this guy, and you force him to go where you want him to go, either up high or if he's going down low, go down low. Come back, please. If you stand here and allow this screen to get you here and you go tight like that, you are in trouble. You must step into the pick, get a little contact inside this paint, and ride the guy out. Coach, let's just use our heads. Okay. Without even like, because let's just use our head, because that was perfect. But let's say I'm guarding him, and he's setting a screen. The first thing I'm going to say to myself, what's the most dangerous thing that he could do? Because he's normally going to be a big guy. If he comes here and gets the ball, what's that? To me, that's a dunk. In the NBA, in college, in college, in some most high school, that's a dunk. Absolutely. So that's what I'm going to be the most scared of, a dunk. If he goes high, I say, well, that's a jump shot. I might can live with that. So my whole key is I'm going to beat him low. If I beat him low, I'm fine. If he goes high, I can still chase him around and get through and be a little bit late, but I can never be late on a layup. Correct. Again, basketball is all about positioning yourself, pre pre preventive defense. It's always moving while the ball's in the air, position yourself to react to where the ball is going to be. That's what basketball, to me, on defense is. So we're going to go through the same drill again. I'm going to be the coach up top. Well, Rip, why don't you be the passer up here? Gotcha. Okay? Get you involved you and awesome. watch. We're going to talk. All you're going to do is just pass it to the wing. They're going to okay. pass it back to you. That's it. Okay, here we go. Get through there. Good. Down pick. Good. Cross screen, Jose. Get over. Get over. Get over. Good. Get over. Good. Down pick. Good. Talk it up, good. talk it up. Last one. Okay, good. Keep talking. Good. Get through. Good. Don't hold him, Dan. Okay, good. 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 Very good. Okay, freeze it. Because the big guy does it great. He's doing a good job of it. Ball goes over here. We don't know that he's going across. He knows it. We don't know that he's going across. So I have to be preventive medicine. Yes, sir. I have to deny here. And what I'm going to do if I'm a good player, I'm going to swim through and make sure that he doesn't get there, that it deters this path. Now he does go. Our big guy did a great job. He waited for a second, made sure he was through. He's through. OK, now I get back to my man. But I can't play defense knowing that he's going through preventive medicine. So now, now we can go four on four because everything is still relative. Three on three, two on two, one on one. The principles are the same, but now the mechanics different because there's more people on the court. Absolutely, you just got It's the same thing. You just moving while the ball's in the air, positioning yourself, maintaining ball you man relationships. Okay. That's what we're trying to do defensively. Okay, let's get it going. Right now, all we're going to do, we're going to do stationary uh, defense. So we got a guy on the wing, guy on the wing, shell drill. Absolutely. Shell. Okay. So these guys are going to be talking and moving while the ball's in the air. We're going to start off, usually we start off with the defense with the ball. And the reason why I do that, because I like the guy on the ball, defender, to be up in this guy. To be able to touch the ball and to put pressure. The more pressure you can put on a passer, the tougher it is to make passes, obviously. You're just trying to get a deflection. So this guy's going to be right here. He's going to start with the ball. First pass, we're just going positioning. So we're going to pass it all the way around the perimeter and just get guys in the right position. Okay, make sure we're talking. Here we go. Good. Let's coach. Let's start from the beginning too. Okay. Because let's start in relation to show where everybody is. Okay. okay. He's on the ball. Correct. So if I'm on the ball, I'm here. Correct. 
He's what we call one pass away. Yes. So he is in a denial position. Over here, he's not one pass away. He's one, two passes away. So he doesn't have to be as close to his man. He should have at least one foot perfect in the lane. He should be able to touch the lane in one foot. Because if he tries to throw that long pass, he could still. He can. You can like still, too. Old man like me can you still, can still get do there. it, too. I can still get there. <laughs> so what he does, he's one, he's one foot in the lane. So he's two passes. Over on that side, he's one pass away, and he's denying in the same position. So now, throw it to him. Now he becomes one pass away. He puts it in the air. He becomes two passes away, and he's one pass away. So it's important to know where you are. Am I one pass away or I'm two passes away? Because if I'm two passes away and I'm next to my man, I'm wrong. I have to be one foot in the lane. You're never three passes away. You're out the game, you're on the bench if you're three passes away. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. All right, let's go. Okay, here we go. Same thing, stationary. Get to where you're supposed to be. Okay, let's invert. Guards inside, big men out. Because sometimes guards are in, big men are out. Because everyone has to know all the positions on the chain. Yes. Got to know it. Let's go. Good. 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 All okay, right, so let's hold it. Great. So now we're going to go on to the next drill. This was just stationary. Now we're just going to add guard to guard pass and we're going to add a down screen. Okay, so the ball's going to start up top. Okay, all we're going to do, everything's going to stay the same. You're moving when the ball's moving. You're moving while the ball's moving. Okay, and you're keeping vision and keeping that ball you man relationship. Here we go. We're going to make the pass to the wing. Oh, sorry. Bring the ball back. Sorry. Guard to guard. Make the pass to the guard. Okay. Taylor's got to jump to the pass. Okay. David's going to go down set this pick. It's Taylor's job to make sure his man gets through this pick. Okay. It's his job to make sure he gets skinny. Okay. Not giving him your whole chest to screen, but turning sideways and getting through like you did. Okay. Up this lane. Pass comes back. Jose's going to go down and set a pick for Dil against Dylan. Get Danny open. And Dylan's going to get through, sliding through. Okay. That's going to be the drill. So, again, must talk, vision, maintain volume man relationship. Okay, here we go. Jump to the pass, Dylan. Jump to the pass, Dylan. Jump to the pass. Good. Jump to the pass, Dylan. Okay, make sure you're jumping. Talk. See both. See both. Good screen. Get through. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Get gotta get off more, Taylor. Gotta get off more. Get off, Dylan. Good. Good. See both. Pressure. Come on, Dylan. Okay, very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Yes, sir. That's all great. Moving, passing. But I know guys like Rip, they oh, yeah. put it on the floor. Oh, yeah. We got Once they them. get it, sometimes they put it on the floor. And to me, the most dangerous thing on the basketball floor is the ball. Correct. So now, could you show us when guys drive in, how do we help yes, sir. and recover? Sure. We can help from the top, and we got different ways to help from the Our philosophy, at, where we coach at Modern Day High School, we try to keep everything to one side of the floor. So once the ball is passed to a wing, it is this guy's job on this wing to force him to the baseline. Okay. Besides the ball being the most important thing, I believe the middle of the court an offensive player in this area is just too damaging. He can pass, shoot, do too many things right here. So what we try to do, we try to force these guys down into our big guys, most likely. Dylan's not the big guy, but we have a big guy. So on the help side defense, we force them down this way. We try to come over and get this trap. So now we got a trap here, two guys. We got a guy sliding over, taking this weak side passway. You're going to be off because he just took your spot. Okay. So he's coming down. He would slide down, make sure no cross-court pass in. And then Blake would slide down here in the middle, 
and take away this. And then he ends up guarding two guys on the first pass out. This is where talking becomes very important when you're kind of in a rotating motion. And I, I will say this, watching the series this year, Detroit Pistons were probably the best rotating team and talking team, and you guys win the championship. Yeah. And that was one of the biggest reasons why I think, because you guys rotate and move defensively. I mean, Kobe's not the easiest person to guard, and then you add Shaq. You guys had a tough job, and I thought you guys did a great job. What do you guys do that makes you so good at rotating on defense? Well, we do the same thing. Like you said, we keep. If the ball's on this side of the court, we try to funnel everything to the baseline. You know, as an offensive player, if, if I get to the middle of the basketball court, I got too many options. Correct. So the one thing we always had the luxury of having a Ben Wallace down there underneath the basket. So he used to tell us all the time, you know, if I'm pressing up, my, up on my man, he'll tell me, rip, forcing baseline, and I got your back on that baseline. But if you go middle, I can't, I can't, I can't do nothing for you. So the one thing I always try to do is press up, front him to the baseline, and he will always get there, mm -hmm. some way or another, him and, him and Rashid. And uh, that took, took a lot of uh, special things away from, from uh, like a special player like Kobe. Oh, it sure does. So sure. let's just move the ball around now, Coach. Okay. But only, the base, only driving baseline, and okay. we're gonna show how you help how baseline. Just driving baseline, my two guards stay stationary. Okay, ball okay. movement, player movement, same get in your position, and then drive baseline. Come on, Dylan. Drive Come on, baseline. Dylan. Dylan, you're supposed to be there. Get out. Okay, drive baseline, get Good. there. Good, drop down. Good. Good. Close out. Good, drop all the way down. Good. Good, that's what we're and looking still. for. That's perfect. That's what we're looking that's for perfect. right there. Now, Coach, yes, sir. let's say I'm playing against Rip Hamilton. He's a good player. Hopefully I don't have to. He's a good player. No, he's a good player, no, Coach. absolutely. I might cannot keep him out of the middle. So Correct. how do we show help towards the middle Correct. if we're playing against a great player like Rip? You can drop this, we, mm -hmm. you can drop this guard down another step. Try to maybe – sometimes if an offensive player sees another defender in an area, they think it's covered and they may not try. Very few offensive players will see two guys and try to split them. Mm. So what we would do, we would bring this guy maybe an extra step down and maybe fake and retreat at this guy, try to slow him down, keep him off balance a little bit. So he's thinking about the defender instead of worrying about what kind of offensive move he might be making. Okay, so we can do that same drill. Correct. But we're going to, for the drill, allow him to go middle. He's going to help and pitch and recover. Okay, and then you guys must talk and talk on the rotation. Again, in a situation like this, if somebody does get to the middle, you get into kind of a scramble situation sometimes because you might, if he can't stop him, this guy ends up stopping him for some reason or another. Now he kicks it out there. Now he might have to rotate. I mean, you got different rotation. And this is where talking is very important again. We can't reiterate it enough how important talking is. No question. Okay. God, stay front. He, he, no, he's going to get middle because he's good. Because he's a good player. Here we go. He's, he's going to be able to get to the middle. All right. Help, help, recover. Good. Good. Okay, Over the top, help, Danny. Help him, recover. Good. Help him, recover. Good. Here's okay. The help. Okay. Freeze. Good. Perfect defense, coach. Let's try to do our best. Yeah. <laughs> Try to do our best. So we got it? Yes, sir. The key is, as Rip started it out, it's the what? The chain. It's the chain. Do not be the weak link in the chain yeah. in the program. Do not be at home and be the weak link because you didn't know that you were two passes away, one pass away, or you were on the ball. Correct. That's the difference. Knowing where you are is big. Or you will be on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> or you will be on the bench. <laughs> Y'all, I would say, Coach, get him out. Yeah. <laughs>'Cause in the NBA you gotta play with a forearm and a hand. You can't have both, you gotta have one or the other. So what I do, if he's real strong, if he's stronger than me, uh -huh. I kinda measure him up. Cause I, I don't want him to know that he's stronger than me. So when he's posted up, like post up for a sec, to get a ball to him. Okay. 
Now what I do is, if he's trying to bang me, like I said, Shaquille O'Neal, if he's uh -huh. trying to bang, I back up mm -hmm. so he won't feel me to kind of right. throw him off balance. And then, you know, I just reattach to him mm -hmm. and just let him know I'm still here. So, so the main thing about that is getting low mm -hmm. and having, having your top part of your body, your, your top part of your body real strong and stable. That okay. way he won't get around you so easy. All right, talk about your base when you talk about your legs now. Is it, what, what's important about your base? See, the thing, you got to get lower than him. Like okay. You, you got to get lower than him. That way you can maneuver him around. Mm -hmm. He won't maneuver you around. Okay. You're the defender, so you got to make sure you defend him in the right way. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if, if, if he's lower than you, then he can either just spin around you or back you down. Okay. He, he got the advantage because he's stronger. So All right. the lower well, you are, the more stronger you are. Okay, let's, let's go through one move right quick, and you, you just take away the first move. Okay. All right, here we go. Good. So what, what's the key there, right there? So the key is what he did, he tried to drop step. Uh -huh. So you got you to you read his move and also be low enough to get there before he does. And uh, when he made that move on the drop step, I was here and I was already ready. Now, if he, if he wants to continue to move and he run through me, then it's the offensive foul. Right, right. So what I did was I, I, I cut his first move off mm -hmm. to make him go to a counter move. I like that. There it is right there. You just heard it. Always what you want to do in the post is take away that first move to make him go to his second move. Now, Amari just took us through how we play defense in the NBA as far as the post defense, and he did a wonderful job of that. Now, we have to show you how to play defense in high school and college because, of course, you can't put your elbow on a man in high school or college. So, Coach Jason is going to take us through that. I'm going to be the point guard. Amari's going to be the post player, and he's going to teach us the defense. Here we go. Okay, in defense at the high school and college level, it is very important to try to alleviate as much contact as possible. Do not allow this guy to get too much into your body to where he's overpowering you. So you must be able to move your feet and position your feet, one foot of, of, over his top foot straddling his leg and another foot behind him. You take your off hand, your back hand, you put your hand in a fist. That's just in case you, people have a tendency to grab jerseys when they're playing defense. So you take that hand and you put it up here right in his arm in this area right here because he's trying to get leverage on your arm. You lead hands up in the lane, thumbs down, fingers are spread. In case the pass comes in, you can knock it down. Okay, this is the basic if the ball is above the free throw line. Now, if Mr. Johnson was attempt to make a pass in the post to get a better angle, if he dribbles to the baseline to get a better angle, what Alex just did was called the X step. He took this hand, he took his elbow, put it in the small of his elbow, stepped through, and X just like that and got to the baseline side, and now he's three quarters baseline side side. That's the quickest way to get to the baseline side and play in post defense. That's wonderful. Let's go through it real quick then. Okay. Let's go like live. Feet. Here we go. Here we go. Move your feet. Okay. Get there. Good. 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 Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Another defensive side of our program is what we call the fight through the screen and get through the screen. And Amari and I are going to be on offense, and then we're going to go against a couple of young men, and they're going to try to, you know, stop us on offense. And let's see what they can do. Yeah. All right, Coach Jason, you take it away. Okay, here we Let's go. See. There's three very basic fundamentals that you need to remember when we're playing defense. One is to have vision where the ball is at all times and know where your man is at all times. Another one would be move as the ball's moving, and a third one would be communication. You're going to see all those right now. Okay, Magic has the ball up top. Mike Garrett is going to be up top pressuring the ball, playing good, solid defense. Okay, on the pass, Mike will jump to the pass. What is this is doing, this is allowing this defender, assuming Magic to go down, set a screen for his player to get him open, this is allowing room for his help defender to get through this screen. As this screen is coming down, Kyle is going to turn his body from giving the screener his chest to giving him his shoulder. And as, also as he's doing that, he's taking his lead hand, putting the ball of Magic's back, taking his backhand, call it the swim move, he's swimming over, staying down in his stance, Thumbs down, fingers spread, up in the lane, trying to deny the pass back out. That's how we get through a screen. Now we're going to go through it probably about half speed so you guys can see it. Get down, talk, guys. Talk on D. Make sure we're talking. Good. Get through. Good. Jump to the pass. Good. See both. Okay. Uh, no, not. Oh, oh, oh. 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 <laughs> there it is. All right, that's good. I thought you, I wanted you to go back. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> you saw it? Who saw it on the baseline? I saw it. All right. Okay, now, 
we're gonna keep it going. And Amari and I gonna get into a, he's gonna come over and what we're gonna do is, is to pick and roll and see if they can get through. Now we're gonna do it two ways. We're gonna have the screen, the person who's getting screened, he's gonna fight over the top of the pick and roll. And then the next time what you're gonna see is that same man go underneath the pick and roll so he can pick up his man after he's come over the screen, okay? Okay. Here you go, Coach Jason. Let's do it. Here we go. Okay, on the pick and roll, again, communication is very important on pick and roll. Okay, if you do not talk time. on a pick and roll, the guy, the man getting screened could get his head knocked off, literally, especially if you have a man like Amari, the specimen he is, coming over here and setting this pick. So on this pick, it is very important that the man, whoever's guarding the man setting the pick, that he speaks. And this call would be, help left, help left. Watch, pick left, Mike, pick left, Mike. And as that's going on, he is positioning himself as a help defender to show himself to try to make Magic go back towards the baseline away from this screen. And in turn, Mike needs to get up into Magic, forcing him to get further out away from the screen. And as he's getting over the screen, it's very important for him to step over this leg, sit on the defender's leg, on the offensive player's leg, get him back so he can take up this space right here and Magic, force Magic where you want him to go. Beautiful. Okay, let's go let's through it. Mario, you got it. Pass it. <clears throat> Make sure you're talking. Over. Step, step, Mike. Over. Good. Right in Good. Talk. Step. Good. Now, the key is, is what Coach said. There's a lot of talking going on at the same time. That's just as important as getting through the screens because both of these two players must communicate with one another to tell each other what's going on. So not only the action is important, but also the talking is important. Yeah. Okay, now, we're gonna change it and go underneath. Another way to defend the pick and roll, the way we just showed you would be a way if the offensive player is good at coming off picks and maybe hitting a, a, a jumper. Sure. You would wanna go over the top, exactly. take away the jump shot. Exactly. This way, if the, the, if the offensive player is not such a great uh, jump shooter and he's a better penetrator, you might want to go underneath. Same thing, help side guys is going to do the same thing. His job is to get here and show himself, give him some room so the guy can see him a little bit. Now on this pick, instead of Mike getting up and trying to pressure and making room right here, he's going to take a step back and Kyle being the man removed that he is, is going to allow Mike to get through and as he's getting through, He's given up maybe a jump shot, but he's taking away this guy's offensive threat, the penetration, and making him shoot this jump shot. So you're trying to find what works, what, what the strength is of the offensive player according to what we want to do defensively. Okay, we're going to uh -huh. show you now. All right, let's do it. Yep. Screen, screen. That's good. Get through. <laughs> Give him through, Mike. Give him through, Mike. Good. See both guys. We we caught him sleeping. <laughs> How's first before we even start? How's the championship change your life? <laughs> it's, cr it's, it's crazy, you know, because uh, you know words can't can't explain, you know, what it means to to win a championship when you got guys like Carl Malone, Gary Payton, guys that have been in the league for a long time and accomplished so many things and don't have one. And uh, I mean, it, you know, anytime when 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 people that don't speak English come up to you and say Hamilton, <laughs> you know you did you did you accomplished something real great. Right, right. Oh, well, I just I, when the first time I saw you, I'm gonna say it again. Well, welcome to the club, the yes, championship yes, club. Sir. Welcome to the club. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a good club to be in. Oh, man, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a crazy. Priority. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy now because people look at you differently now. Right. You know, especially you know the elite players in the league. You know, mm -hmm. guys that have been trying to get it for so long. You know, it's different, man. I'm blessed. Now you you guys played on. A, what everyone says, a team. Mm -hmm. What's the different approach for you mm -hmm. when you play on a team that is so well balanced? And teams that when you first got in the league, when back in Washington, things, it wasn't that, wasn't that balanced. Uh, I think the key is, you know, you got to believe in your teammates. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that uh, when everybody's on your team is willing to sacrifice for, for one purpose and everybody's on the same page, 
you know, good things are going to happen. You know, we didn't have no egos. We didn't have none of that on the team. You know, guys pushed each, push each other every day in practice. You know, uh, in Washington, you know, when you're young. You know, so when you're young and you're just coming out, see who can put up the most points, who can get the most rebounds, who can get the most assists, and you're not playing together. But when I got traded to Detroit, you know, you had guys that had been in the league for a while, so they knew what they wanted to accomplish, and I just fit it right in. Well, you just said – Put your ego aside. How do you put your ego aside if you're a basketball player? Because one of the things you have to have is an ego almost yeah. to be good. Yeah. You know what? That's why I say it's crazy because when you see everybody else on your team making sacrifices, you don't want to be that guy that come on, come on the team and be like, man, well, I'm going to try to change. I'm going to try to do something different. I'm going to try to come out and shoot 30 times. Because in the long run, Everybody gonna look at you crazy, right? And you don't want, you know, when you got 15 guys on the team and one guy's looking crazy and one guy's not on the same page, it's a wrap. Right. <laughs> you know, you're not gonna be able to win that championship because everybody's not on the same page. Well, you're known for moving without the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you're 14, mm -hmm. 12, 10, the first thing you learn is to do it with the ball. Yeah. So how did you learn to do it without the ball? Well, you know, in high school, you know, I was a guy that. I always like to dribble the ball and things like that. And, uh, you know, my coach, uh, Ricky Hicks, he, he told me, he said, Rip, you, you're wasting too much energy. You know, and, I mean, you're dribbling the ball, you'll get away with it right now. But when you get to college, you're not going to be able to get away with it. And one thing Calhoun and Coach Hobbs and the people in Connecticut, they always said, use your teammates. You know, Rip, don't try to do everything by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you don't have to score when you got the ball in your hand. And the one thing I try to do is this use a lot of change of directions, you know, mm -hmm. change of speeds, use my teammates, and keep moving because everybody hates to guard somebody that stays moving. How much preparation it is for you now, let's say, when Coach Brown ain't there, Detroit Pistons are not there, mm -hmm. it's just ripping the gym. Mm -hmm. I'm not here. Yeah. How much preparation time are you taking? Man, I go for about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. You know, my thing is, I tell people all the time, that's when guys get better. When nobody's not in the gym and you can work out by yourself and just work on your game. Mm -hmm. that, that, that makes players the great players. And, uh, you know, I do a whole lot of stuff. I stay moving. You know, I, I bring, you know, a couple guys in the gym and I do a lot of moving without the ball. I, I would never stay still and shoot. Mm -hmm. If you ever watch me play, I'm never just a standstill shooter. I'm always moving around because I feel as though if I get my heart going, you know, that's, that, that preparates me more for the game. Mm -hmm. Like I'll take two dribbles from half court for a pull-up jump shot. And they them type things that you'll get in a game that you would never know because you're in the gym by yourself and you keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, then it makes the game easy. Well, if you said, well, when it's all said and done now, mm -hmm. people are gonna say Rip Hamilton's the best at, what's that thing? Uh, probably the medium range game, you know, either that, but I love to tell people I'm the best, uh, most conditioned athlete in the league. You know, because I really take pride on my condition. You know, I take pride on, you know, working out. You know, because, like I said, at this game, at this level, everybody wants to dunk. Everybody wants to take it on the legs a couple of times. I try to do stuff that people don't want to do. And that's how the game's been played. You know, if you watch all the old school tapes, you know, guys didn't do 360. Guys didn't take it on the legs a thousand times. You know, it was a lot of movement without the ball. A lot of guys were thin like me. And I take pride at that. Well, you, you, you just basically said it because the two things that you have to work on that most people don't want to work on, mm -hmm. conditioning is tough, yeah. and the mid-range shot mm -hmm. is tough. Those are the two things that they're not, they don't come naturally. Those mm -hmm. are the things you have to work on. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to tell you, the, like, one of the biggest reasons I start working on my mid-range game because when I was in 11th grade and I was at the ABCD camp in Teaneck, and... That was the first opportunity I got out of Coastal and played against other guys like Kobe, Tim Thomas, Jermaine O'Neal. was a lot of great players there. And everybody was dunking. And I was dunking too, but I seen these guys, they were jumping much <laughs> higher than me. And I said to myself, I said, man, I got I to gotta go back to the drawing board. I got to right. find something that other people ain't doing. And then that's when I really worked on my one dribble pull-up, my two dribble pull-up, my three dribble pump fake pull-up. And uh, I think that's really what got me over and got me where I'm at today. So seeing other players yeah. and what they were doing yeah. and what they couldn't do yeah. made you work on your game. Definitely. Man, you definitely got to work on your fundamentals. You know, I think that fundamentals is, is, is one of the biggest things that's lacking in today's game. You know, I mean, it could be anything from, you know, squaring up to the basket. It could be working on your ball handling, 
always looking up. It can be anything. I think just the, all the fundamentals is important because you're going to get to a point in time where if it's going to college and you're playing with four or five other McDonald's All-Americans or anything like that, it's going to be a time where you're going to match up with somebody that's just as athletic as you, just as fast as you. So you're going to, have something, you're going to need something to go to, and I think the fundamentals is always something to go to. We're going to show you some creative drills that we run that uh, are kind of fun for the kids to do along with some games. And I'm going to have my assistant coach, Bob Servin, uh, show you these drills. Thank you very much. One of the first drills that we like to uh, work with our players on to allow them to have some fun and work on their creativity is to use chair dribbling. And we'll stick two or three chairs on the wing on each side of the floor or at the top of the key and let them come out and uh, really work on their ball handling and incorporate all the drills uh, that we've worked on in practice. Guys, go ahead, let's see what you got. After we work with two chairs, we'll add a third chair to allow for even more creativity. The placement of the chairs is not critical. Uh, wherever you feel like putting the chairs, we just have decided to try these moves from the wing and from the point. Uh, just seems to be a spot where uh, the ball is being handled by our players the most. All right, let's see what you got. Okay, now we're gonna to move to the top of the key area and go back with two chairs. Again, the players are working on their creativity, uh, having a lot of fun with this. Uh, they'll make some mistakes, but those mistakes are also gonna be part of our workouts and hopefully with the mistakes will come some improvement rapidly. Okay, you can put the chairs, as we said earlier, anywhere you want to help to create the creativeness in all the players. And guys, we now add the third chair, see what you have.
All right, now we're gonna move them over to the other side of the floor so that we do work both sides of the court. Again, chairs can be placed anywhere a coach would like to put them uh, during their workout. Guys, go to it, here we go. I was going to try and move the chair, but I right. guess they get the idea. Okay. Okay. A couple more. And then you're going to stop it. Okay, during each of the drills, you can relocate the chairs at any time. Okay, here we go. Two more. One of the games we like to incorporate with our lower level players and in our basketball camps um, is a game called Shark in the Water, but our high school players at the varsity level uh, seem to enjoy it uh, as much, if not more, than the younger kids that we go through this with. Shark in the water, you take a small area with a number of players. They are going to try and steal the ball from one another. When the ball goes out of the designated boundaries, uh, that particular player is out. They're trying to knock the ball away. They can body up against people, and it helps teach them to protect the basketball when they're dribbling. Guys, ready? Go. Sometimes the coach will have to step in and help with the players that aren't sure if they've been knocked out or not. We've had a couple. Uh, Josh, you're out. Uh, if they pick the ball up, they don't keep dribbling the ball the entire time. Uh, they would be out of the drill. You can always shrink your area down depending on the number of players you have. And when you get to the final two, we like to stick those two in the top of the key area here. So uh, guys, if you're ready to go, Let's see who is the shark in the water. Okay, a variation of shark in the water is an old schoolyard game uh, of tag, but we use a basketball with each player and the goal is for them to keep dribbling the basketball the entire time that the coach is set aside for a minute, two minutes. Uh, if you get tagged, you're it. There's no tag backs. Every player will stay in the drill for the amount of time. And the people that are the winners, the players that are the winners, are the ones left at the end who are not it. Guys, ready? Fog is it, go. Sorry. 
Kyle's it. You're it. And hold the basketballs. Again, to start the game, designate a player to be it. And each player that they tag will then become it. It's all inclusive. The players will stay in this game for the entire duration that you decide to use.